Welcome to our student broadcast of University of Florida Gators football, a production of the students of the University of Florida College of Journalism and Communications. Now, let's go live to Ben Hill Griffin Stadium for Florida Gators football. Welcome back to University of Florida Student Broadcast Network. Today, we have the number eight Florida Gators taking on the number five Georgia Bulldogs here in Jacksonville, Florida at TIAA Bank Field. It's the world's largest outdoor cocktail party getting underway here in Jacksonville. It's going to be a fun matchup. These two teams have a lot of history together with the great event taking on place in Jacksonville. It's a great rivalry. I'm really excited for this game today. Before we get underway, though, let's talk about what we're in for. Both these teams, obviously, top 10 ranked teams, both very good teams, in fact, but we should see uh, a lot of things. Let's talk about the University of Florida, though, first, as U UF has had a fantastic offense all season this year so far. They've been averaging over 42 points per game so far. They're going to look to obviously continue that today. And Kyle Trask, who has just been unbelievable for this team ever since he came in and started for Felipe Franks. Kyle Trask actually last week against Missouri set an SEC record for most touchdowns in his first four games of this season. So very impressive from him. Obviously also on the offensive side of the ball you have people like Pitts and Kadarius Tony, who lead the team both with seven touchdowns, which is extremely impressive. Meanwhile, on the defensive side of the ball, things have not been so great. They struggled a lot in the first three games of the season. Obviously, one of the most notable losses coming to Texas A&M when Florida Gators were ranked number three at the time. They have been much better uh, last week, anyway, against Missouri. They held them to just 17 points, had an interception. And while you expect the Gators to do well in that game, they still overall did a much better job than they normally had been in those first three weeks. Obviously, the Gators missed a couple of weeks due to COVID and having some players test positive, including head coach Dan Mullen. But the Gators are back in action now, looking to be doing much better. Evan McPherson, who was out last week, is also now back. So he is good to go. The veteran kicker for the Florida Gators, so a positive note for them. Now, on the other side of the ball, the Georgia Bulldogs, Another great football team. They've been good for the past couple of years. They've actually beat Florida in the last three matchups so far in this great rivalry here at, in Jacksonville, Florida. Now, Georgia is a decent offensive team, but I think they're even a, a better defensive team. But they've been struggling recently on defense. If you look at the numbers, they are they've given up an average of 16.2 points per game. They're ranked first in the SEC for yards against per game, which is 300 total yards of offense given up, which is extremely impressive. Their toughest game going against Alabama, which is the only game they've lost so far this season. So defense has been very fantastic, but they're going up against a really tough opponent, as we mentioned, the Florida Gators, one of the best offenses in the SEC. So we're going to be really interesting to see how this defense can fare against the Univers University of Florida and Kyle Trask and company. Taking a look at their offense, they've been averaging 29.2 points per game, but only 19 points over the last two weeks. So that offense is going to need to get better this week if they want a shot at winning this football game. Now, obviously, again, as we mentioned, Florida's defense, one of their weaker points. So you hope to see Georgia, if you're a Georgia fan, take advantage of that and start scoring more points like they did in the weeks leading up to this. Last week, Georgia only beat Kentucky 14-3. to They're going to need a much different game because, uh, you know, if you get that kind of performance from Georgia again, the Gators have a really good shot at winning this game. We're going to take a quick break before we get back, and this game gets underway. And Up next, we're going to be talking about the University of Florida and the brawl that happened against Missouri next week. You've been listening to the Florida Gators Student Broadcast Network. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to the Florida Gators Student Broadcast Network. My name is Jake Ricker. Welcome back here to Jacksonville, Florida, as the Gators are getting set to take on the Georgia Bulldogs here in just a few moments. One of the, This one of the greatest rivalries in all of sports, I would say, with the Florida Gators and Georgia Bulldogs having a lot of history uh, together. The all-time series so far for both these teams, 53-43-2 in favor of the Georgia Bulldogs. So the 
uh, Georgia has an advantage again as we mentioned before the break they've won the last three as they look to continue that streak these games date back actually all the way to 1904 they used to play in Athens Jacksonville Savannah Gainesville even had a game in Tampa and it wasn't until 1933 where they decided to settle on playing in Jacksonville Florida the only time they haven't played in Jacksonville since 1933 was in 1995 when they did play one game in Athens but we are back in Jacksonville for this one and should be another fantastic matchup now we told you before we went to break last time we're going to talk about the Florida Gators and their brawl against Missouri last week so if you don't know at the end of the first half uh, quarterback Kyle Trask took a huge hit at the end after he threw a Hail Mary, Hail Mary attempt as they had one more play left to go, so Dan Mullen decided to take the shot. But after the hit, a huge brawl ensued. Dan Mullen was furious. He came out onto the field and was looking either, you know, have some words with the player or, or I'm not sure if it was the head coach he wanted to talk to, but nevertheless, it <laughs> A huge brawl ensued. Both benches were clearing, jumping around. Punches were thrown. It was absolute madness all the way. It took referees, coaches, and even security a couple of minutes to break up the eventual fight. They do get everything settled down, though. Dan Mullen was fired up as he was leaving the or heading to the locker room. He came back out, pumped up his crowd. Obviously, the Gators went on to win that game. Kyle Trask was luckily okay. But a couple of notes here is that the Gators will have a couple of players that were suspended in that brawl. Now, they're only suspended for half the game today. And those players were defensive lineman Zachary Carter and linebacker Anton Powell. So, We'll see how much that ends up affecting the Florida Gators here. Obviously, their defense, one of their weaker points. So I don't want to say, you know, not a huge loss, but definitely something to keep an eye on if this Florida Gators defense struggles early, but then maybe starts to play better in that second half. So if you're the Georgia Bulldogs, you're going to want to try and take advantage of that. Obviously, with any time you have a younger player having to step up, you know, that's one of the great one of the things these great quarterbacks do nowadays, like in the NFL, is when they know there's a rookie receiver in there that may not know exactly how to play certain scenarios, they're going to try to take advantage of that, and that's what you hope to see the Georgia Bulldogs do today. However, on the other side of the ball, the Georgia Bulldogs are not without injury as well as they have three different injuries coming into this game, uh, a couple on the offensive line, so that could be a huge effect for the Bulldogs, one on defense as well. But, you know, it's going to be a great game today. I hope, might even see a little bit of fireworks. As we mentioned, these two teams have a very uh, historic rivalry. So we'll see what happens. But, you know, looking at the Georgia Bulldogs quarterback situation, Seston Bennett has a 58.4 completion percentage on the year. He's been pretty good for the Georgia Bulldogs. He's going to need to be excellent today, though. Georgia Bulldogs wearing their red uniforms with the white numbers. Meanwhile, the Gators with their orange helmets, white jerseys, and blue pants coming out. We'll be back after this on the Florida Gators Student Broadcast Network here in Jacksonville, Florida. It's going to be the Florida Gators taking on the Georgia Bulldogs here at the world's largest outdoor cocktail party. Welcome back to the Student Broadcast Network here in Jacksonville, Florida. Refs are meeting up at center field, and we believe we're going to have the coin toss just any minute as this game gets closer and closer to kickoff. It's going to be a great one. It's a beautiful day here in Jacksonville, Florida. This is actually the 99th meeting between these two teams here in Jacksonville, so it's going to be a great matchup. we got two very good football teams. We're going to see who's going to prevail here in just a few minutes. A quick note for you. We mentioned last time before the break is that Georgia had a de injury on defense, excuse me, and that was actually Richard LeCounty who had a motorcycle accident on the night of their last game last week, and he is currently out indefinitely. He was released from the hospital with a concussion and bruised rib, so an unfortunate loss there for the Georgia Bulldogs. You're going to have to have some younger players step up to try and take his place, so Players are headed out onto the field as we get set to kick off this matchup. It's going to be a fun one today. Gators wearing their blue pants, white jersey with blue numbers and orange helmets. Meanwhile, the Bulldogs with their white pants, red jersey, white numbers, and red helmets. And here we are underway with the ball kicked off by McPherson. And that one lands back in the end zone. So the Georgia Bulldogs will take it starting on the 25. Headed out there is going to be Georgia Bulldogs quarterback, 
Seston Bennett starting in his first year for the Bulldogs after quarterback Jake Fromm went to the draft last year as a junior. So as he leads his team out there on the field, he's going to look to try and get out to a good start against the Gators defense that has been known to be shaky so far this year as they look to try and turn the tide here and continue their success from last week. Benton out there in the shotgun. And as players move in motion here, he's got a running back to his right and left. Here's the handoff. It's going to be White. White bats around to the left side. White gets the move. He's got some blockers. White's still going. He's at the 50, the 40, the 30, the 20, the 10. No one's home. Touchdown, Bulldogs. What a run by Samir White on the first play of the game. He got some blocks and he went all the way to the end zone. And this is not what you wanted for the Florida Gators. A terrible start on defense, and Georgia's up 6-0. Some excellent blocking by the offensive line for the Georgia Bulldogs. White made one cut, and then he was gone. Off to the races, nobody home, all the way to the end zone. So Georgia takes a huge lead here as the extra point is up and good. Kicked by Jack Ponsney. And now the Bulldogs take a 7-0 lead here on the first play of the game. Gators defense just did not. They, they had a couple players cut up in the right areas, but I think more credit to the Georgia Bulldogs offensive line making some excellent blocks. And White, who has been excellent for the Georgia Bulldogs this year, continues to do so. He has six rushing touchdowns before coming in today. He now has seven, the seventh of the season. So the Gators are going to need to have a strong offensive start and try to respond here because this could get ugly quick. Because the Bulldogs have all of the momentum so far in this one. With just 14-48 uh, into the game. Gators will have a lot of work to do, but this offense we know is a very high-powered uh, uh, high offense, excuse me. So if anybody can march down the field and respond and tie this game, it's the Florida Gators offense. But you know Dan Mullen is going to have some words. And Todd Grantham, not a good start for him. He's already possibly on the hot seat after this start this year, especially losing to Texas A&M. A lot of questions with that Gators defense so far. So the Bulldogs will kick this one off. After a miraculous 75-yard touchdown run, that ball is kicked out of the end zone. So we're going to have a touchback. So Kyle Trask heads out on the field to take the ball on the 25. 18 passing touchdowns in his first four games. That was the SEC record we talked about. He's been absolutely fantastic for them. And then you look at Kyle Trask connecting to one of his favorite receivers, Kyle Pitts, who has seven touchdowns on the season. But the star of last week was Kadarius Toney who was mentioned, also has seven touchdowns. Here's Trask in the shotgun. Three receivers out to his right, one to his left. It's going to be a handoff to Damian Pierce. Pierce, he's making some cuts. He's got some room to run. He's tripped up, though. He needs about four yards on the play, so that'll bring up second down. With 14.37 left to go in the first quarter. Uh, the Gators running backs, have they don't have their main guy like the Georgia Bulldogs do. The Georgia Bulldogs rely on Samir White, but as for the Gators... They have multiple running backs they can go to in Malik Davis, Damian Pierce, and even Naquan Wright. Trask takes his snap in the shotgun, drops back, looking right. He's pressured, rolling out to his right now. He's got some time. He's going to throw, and that ball is incomplete, intended for Jacob Copeland. Trask did not have much time to think. He had to roll out quickly to his right, and now it's going to bring up third and six for the Florida Gators. As the Bulldogs lead this one 7-0 with 14-13 left to go in the first quarter. Both teams looking to try and make a statement in this game to show that they are best team in the East in the SEC. Trask is going to be alone in the backfield. Three receivers out to his right, two to his left. Kadarius Tony in motion to that left-hand side. Trask takes a snap, drops back. He's looking left. He's going to throw, and that ball is tipped incomplete. Intended for Damian Pierce. In excellent coverage by the Georgia Bulldogs defense. It was number 10. 
Here he is, Jackson. So the Gators will go three and out, and they will bring out the punting team. Actually, excuse me, that was number 16 for the Bulldogs. But nevertheless, excellent coverage as he was right there to tip that ball away. So Jacob Finn out to punt this ball here for the Gators. As they're going to need a big defensive stop. This next drive around already down 7-0. That ball is up, and it is going to be called for a fair catch. Don't they grab it? He's going to run with it at the 30, and he's finally pushed out of bounds just before the 20. That was Jackson on the run. So an excellent start for the Georgia Bulldogs with 13.58 left to go in the first quarter. They scored on the first play of the game on a 75-yard touchdown by White, and they lead it. Here early in this first quarter, we'll be right back after this. You're listening to the Florida Gators Student Broadcast Network here from Jacksonville, Florida. Welcome back here to Jacksonville, Florida. My name is Jake Ricker on the University of Florida Student Broadcast Network. It's the Georgia Bulldogs who lead it 7-0 in the first quarter after Samir White went for a 75-yard touchdown run on the first play of the game. And the Gators, excuse me, the Gators went three and out on their first drive. So the Bulldogs back out there at just in front of the 40 here. Bennett in the shotgun with White to his right. He's going to hand it off. Play action play. No, he's going to keep it. Here goes Bennett. He's got some speed. He's all the way past the first down marker and an extra yard as well. That was an 11-yard run by Bennett. He faked the handoff to White, even fooled me there for a second. It was kind of a high snap. Cox Jr. went to go after White, and then Bennett just took off. With some excellent speed, it's a gain of 11. It's going to be first and 10 for the Bulldogs. With 13.39 left to go in this first quarter, Georgia leading it 7-0 in the first quarter. Bennett in the shotgun with White behind him. He's got two receivers out to his left-hand side. Bennett takes a snap. He's going to hand it off to White this time. White bouncing on the outside, and this time he's got nowhere to go as the Gators' defensive line holds and maybe a gain of an inch or two on the play. So the Gators' defense, though, really needs to step up their game as that was not the start you wanted to get it off to. And you can imagine Dan Mullen is too happy. Remember, as we mentioned, the Gators do have one defensive line that was suspended for half of this game in Zachary Carter and linebacker Atuan Powell. So you wonder if that is going to make a huge difference. Obviously, Gators defense not doing very well at the start of this game. Here's the snap and pass out left. It's cut by number four. He's still going past that first down yard marker. An excellent gain there by Matt Landers. Bennett faked the handoff again there to White, threw it on the outside, and made some excellent moves to get around one Gators defender. And the Georgia Bulldogs are marching down the field right now as they're at the 35-yard line. Here's the snap to Bennett. Bennett throwing out short, and that pass is knocked out incomplete. Excellent coverage by the Florida Gators defense. As the defender got a hand on that ball and was just able to knock it out of his hands. Excellent job there from the Florida Gators. They're going to need a lot more of that, though, here now. Second and 10, 12 13 left to go in the first quarter. 7 0. Bulldogs lead it. Bennett in the shotgun. He's got James Cook to his right. Here's the snap. It's going to be a handoff to Cook. Cook up the middle and gains about two or three yards on the play. Short gain for the Bulldogs there. Taking a look at Seston Bennett's stats here. His first 13 games it was not as good. A lot of confusion on the Florida Gators defense right now. and Looks like the Gators are going to take a timeout as they were not set and ready to go. So a continuous... Bad start here for the Florida Gators. And we're going to take a quick break here with 11.53 left to go in the first quarter. The Georgia Bulldogs lead it 7 0. You've been listening to the Florida Gators Student Broadcast Network. We'll be back after this.
Welcome back to the Florida Gators Student Broadcast Network. My name's Jake Ricker. We're in Jacksonville, Florida, where the number eight Florida Gators are taking on the number five Georgia Bulldogs. The Bulldogs lead this one 7 to nothing with 11.53 left to go in the first quarter after a 75-yard touchdown around on the first play. Here's a snap. Bennett in the shotgun taking. He's going to fire one downfield, and that is caught. And he's in for the touchdown. Number 81, Marquez Ronzi Jackson. What a run. He's now down and shaken up on the play. Bennett threw an absolute bullet. And in the middle of the field, it was caught. And he took off and took a late hit at the, or not a late hit, but a, a hit late on that play. Gators brought some of the heat. Bennett got it out quickly. And a great job by number 81 and Rosemary Jackson to get into the end zone. And you take a, we're looking at the shot here as he took it was a low hit to the knee, and yeah, you can see that knee just bend the wrong way. That is not a good look. And multiple trainers out to attend to him now. You hope he's okay. But the Bulldogs now with a 13-point lead here pending the extra point. This Gators defense has just immensely struggled. And I'm not sure if it was on the hit. I think it was after the hit. He took a weird bounce, and his leg went the opposite way. Lots of trainers out there right now. He probably has a broken ankle. I would imagine stretcher is being brought out. Not what you want to see for these young players, especially in a big game like this. You know these guys are excited about these kinds of games, and then to get hurt like that. Just a very unfortunate situation. So you hope the best for him and that he can quickly recover. Yeah, look at that. Oh, that does not look good. Looking at the replay right now. The way he came down, his foot just went in the opposite direction. After that low hit. Definitely not a good feeling. So we're going to take a quick break here on the Student Broadcast Network. Georgia Bulldogs, though, leading it 13-0 now here with 1144 left to go in the first quarter. Welcome back to the Florida Gators Student Broadcast Network. My name's Jake Ricker here in Jacksonville, Florida. As the Bulldogs lead it 13 to nothing, although the call on the field was a Georgia touchdown, but it is now being put under review. And right now we're seeing Ramsey Jackson carted off the field after he took a low hit from Gators defender Brad Stewart. And his foot definitely went in the wrong direction, which you, you hate to see an injury like that so early in this game especially and you can only hope that he'll be able to recover quickly and get back on the field as soon as he can but meanwhile they are taking a look at this touchdown to see if he was down before he broke the plane but you know I think the bigger problem right now here if you're the Florida Gators is uh, the defense just looks awful as we're getting the call right now and it is it will stand, so it's a touchdown for the Georgia Bulldogs. But the Gators' defense, just they let up their 75-yard touchdown run on the first play of the game, and they let the Bulldogs march down the field, and then a 32-yard touchdown pass here on this second drive. And it was an excellent throw by Bennett. Credit to him, he had to stay in there. He took a hit and still got the touchdown pass off, but Gators defense does not look good early. Offense can't do it all. Here's the extra point. It is up and good. So the Bulldogs now lead it 14 to nothing with 11.44 left to go in this fourth or first, first quarter, excuse me. And Dan Mullen is going to need to get these guys together and rally his troops and try to flip the script of this game so far because right now it is leading towards a Georgia blowout, and it's early. 
Taking a look here at the, the hit Bennett took. He took a big hit. At the end of that play from number 22, Rashard Torrance for the Florida Gators. Still had some time to celebrate, though, before we go back up. Bennett over on the side. He's being looked at by some trainers right now. But you don't know, blame him for taking such a huge shot at the end there, though. But he stood in there, threw a bullet pass. Excellent pass. So the Gators... We'll look to try and maybe get a little bit of return going and get something going here on offense. They had a three and out their first time out. But the bigger problem right now, I think, is the defense letting up 14 points on the first two drives of the game. Here's the kick by the Bulldogs, and this one will go out of the end zone for another touchback for the Florida Gators. So Kyle Trask and company will now head back out of the field and try and flip this script, look a little better tomorrow. Or look a little better <laughs> the rest of this game, excuse me. Again, we've mentioned this multiple times, Kyle Trask and his offense has been excellent so far this year, but the, the Bulldogs' defense has been very impressive. Had great coverage so far in this one. Let's see if Florida can change that, though. Damian Pierce out there for the Gators to the left of Kyle Trask. Pierce rolling out as he takes a snap. Trask looking right, looking left. Now throwing downfield. That ball is caught. No, it is dropped. It went right through the hands there of number three, Trayvon Grimes. It was a great pass from Kyle Trask. He put it right where he needed to. Kyle Trask took a hit. At the end of that play by number 10, Malik Herring. The Kyle Trask 0 for 3 so far. It's going to be second down in 10. Trask in the shotgun with Pierce to his left. Two receivers out to his right and one to his left. Trask takes the snap. He's going to hand it off to Pierce. Pierce looking to make a move. Cuts back going the other way. Pierce, he's got some room to run now and he gets the first down. An excellent run by Damian Pierce who had nowhere to go. Made a cut back and then ran the other way. It is raining here in Jacksonville. Very good job by Damian Pierce to see that nothing was there on the original play. Make a cut back and gain some positive yards. Fans heading for, try to get inside and get some coverage as it starts to rain here. Kyle Trask under center. Damian Pierce in the backfield. One receiver out to Trask's left. Three of them bunched up on the right. Here's the snap. It's going to be a handoff to Damian Pierce. Bounce out to the left side. He's got some room to run. He's throwing out of bounds at about the 41-yard line. we will bring up third down for the Gators. Third, or second and four, excuse me, with 10.47 left to go in the first quarter as the Bulldogs lead it 14-0. Damian Pierce with a couple of excellent runs on this drive so far. Nothing huge, but, you know, just smart plays all around. It was Xavier Henderson, by the way, on that one passing play. I said it was Craven Grimes, but it was actually Xavier Henderson. But nevertheless, it's second and four here for the Gators. And Trask takes a snap, play action pass. Here's a throw downfield, and the ball is caught! It's number nine, he's still got some room to run. He's finally taken out of bounds. What an excellent pass play there. Finally, the Gators with some huge offense. Looking excellent, wide open downfield there. Kyle Trask makes the great, makes a great pass and gets them downfield. Trask in the shotgun. He's alone in the backfield this time. Nine forty-four left to go in this fourth quarter. Play clock ticking down under ten now. Three receivers out to Trask's left. He takes a snap, drops back, looking left. He's going to throw. That ball is caught. Right at the line of scrimmage, and he's taken out of bounds there for her forward progress that was cut by the backup tight end. Keymore Gamble, actually Whittemore, excuse me. Had some room there, but Georgia Bulldogs defenders got to him as quickly as they could. So Kyle Trask in the shotgun here again. 
Takes a snap. He's going to hand it off to Damian Pierce. Pierce up the middle. He's hit, but still gets a couple of more yards. And that's going to bring up third and short here for the Gators with 8.54 left to go. They're in some hurry up offense. Third and four. Trash gets the shotgun with Pierce to his right. One receiver out to his left and two to his right. Gators looking, trying to make something go, and they're changing up their positioning here. Now three receivers bunched up to Trask is right. Damian Pierce in motion to the left. Trask takes a snap, looking right, has to step up. He's going to throw. That ball's caught in for the end zone. Touchdown, Gators! Number 89, Justin Shorter. Excellent job by the Florida Gators offense. They come out and they respond and cut this deficit in half, pending the extra point. You're going to see Dan Trask takes the snap, drops back. He's got to step up quickly. He had some pressure, and this just dumps that off, and nobody was on that left side, and Shorter ran all, all by himself and in the end zone. McPherson out to put this extra point up. He was out last week against Missouri, now back, and he nails that one right down the middle. So the Florida Gators... Respond with a touchdown. It's now 14 to seven as the Bulldogs lead it with 8.20 left to go in the first quarter. What a game so far here in the world's largest outdoor cocktail party in Jacksonville, Florida. You've been listening to the Florida Gators Student Broadcast Network. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to the University of Florida Student Broadcast Network. Here in Jacksonville, Florida, as the Florida Gators are taking on the Georgia Bulldogs. It's the number eight ranked Florida Gators, number five ranked Georgia Bulldogs. Bulldogs are up 14-0 here in the first quarter, but the Gators responded with a great drive and a touchdown. So when the Bulldogs lead it by seven with a score of 14-7, here with 8.20 left to go in the first quarter, it was Justin Shorter on the touchdown. Kyle Trask did an excellent job of stepping up on the play as it was Malik Herring who was putting some pressure on Trask. He's been very good for that Georgia Bulldogs defense so far in this game. Gators have really been utilizing a lot of their tight ends so far. You know, it was it was the Kyle Pitts show early on in the season. He's already got seven touchdowns, but recently we saw a lot of Campbell from last night. Here's the return by the Georgia Bulldogs. He's got some room to run. He's still going. He's finally brought down. Jackson with a huge return for the Bulldogs. And now an injured Gator on the field. So things just continue to go wrong for the Gators. Justin Shorter took that one in the end zone. He took it out. And just a huge gap, a couple of missed tackles. McPherson, I think that was, missed him there and was finally brought down. Excuse me, there might have been Jacob Finn there. But, you know, not a good start for the Gators. And that's Damian Pierce, who's down, who's been excellent for the the Florida Gators on that last offensive drive. So you hate to see him go down. If you're a Gators fan, he is getting up and he will walk off on his own power. So good sign for the Gators there. 8-11 left to go in this first quarter. Bulldogs lead it 14-7. to And the Bulldogs will get first and 10 here on the UF 44. So an excellent start to this drive for them. Again, as we were mentioning before, that big return, Gators have really utilized all of their tight ends. With Zipper, the most recent one today, he already has 39 yards on one target. But he has really been been excellent. So we, and as we mentioned, it was Gamble before last week. I haven't seen too much of Kyle Pitts ever since that Texas A&M game when he went out kind of early. Damian Pierce walking on the sidelines, working with the trainers right now. Definitely looks to be shaken up a little bit. Looks like he's okay, taking some sprints. 
And we'll see, I'll have to wait and see if he comes back in this one. If you take a look, try and figure out what happened. He's kind of tripped up there. He got tripped up by one of his own defenders. That's what happened. So here come the Georgia Bulldogs now out on offense. Looking to respond here. Here's a handoff to Cook. Cook bounces up the left side. Is finally brought down for a gain of about three on the play. Seston Bennett so far has been excellent in this game. Obviously, the Bulldogs with two drives and two touchdowns. One of them being a passing touchdown. Longest drive so far, two minutes and 14 seconds. And that first one only taking one play. So the Bulldogs offense is rolling. and They're already on the Gators' side of the field right now. Bennett in the shotgun with Cook to his right, White to his right. Cook to his left, excuse me. Bennett drops back, looking right. He's going to throw, and that ball is incomplete. It was wide. Intended there for number 83 for the Bulldogs. So third and seven now, a big third down for the Gators defense after that huge run back for the Bulldogs. If you're Florida, you really like to get off here and potentially hold them to a field goal or they might have to punt the ball. It's going to be a long field goal if they want to try it. Already still down seven here in this fourth first quarter with 7.32 left to go. So Bennett in the shotgun. He's got White to his right. Takes a snap. He drops the ball. That ball is loose and it's kicked out. And I think Bennett's on top of it. He is, but the Gators with a huge third down stand. And it's now going to be fourth down. Snap was a little bit to the right. Bennett couldn't handle it. And had to quickly jump on that ball. But a costly mistake for the Bulldogs there. They started off with excellent field position. And the Gators defense stands tall. And a big stop there. So fourth and 13 now for the Bulldogs. And they're going to punt this ball away. Kamara punts that one. High punt going in the end zone. We'll see if the Bulldogs can grab this. They can't. Goes into the end zone. So it's going to be a touchback. For the Florida Gators, an excellent defensive stand, though. They keep it within seven. Here with 8-11 left to go in the first quarter. Bulldogs lead it 14-7. We'll be back after this. You've been listening to the Florida Gators Student Broadcast Network. Welcome back to the Florida Gators Student Broadcast Network. Here's Trask on the snap. Hands it off. Throws now. It's caught by Malik Davis. Spins around, and he's brought down. About five years short of the first down. Remember, Damian Pierce went out on an injury earlier in this game, and now Damian Pierce, or excuse me, Malik Davis is in. And Malik Davis and Damian Pierce, and even Nacon Wright have been three running backs that have been utilized excellently by Florida. Florida going with that hurry-up offense still. Cal Trask in the shotgun. Malik Davis to his right. That's Grimes in motion there. Trask takes a snap. It's going to be a handoff. And it's got first down yardage. Excellent run by Malik Davis there. He's passed and he's picked up the first down. So the Gators after responding there, now only down seven. They're looking to try and tie this game. Looks like there was a little bit of miscommunication on the Georgia Bulldogs end. Nevertheless, it's a first down pickup for the Florida Gators. So 5.44 left to go in the first quarter. Trask takes a snap. It's going to be a throw out to his left to Tony. Tony tries to make a spin move. He's still up on his feet, and he's brought down. He went backwards there. Looks like he got forward progress, though. But a big loss there as they tried to swing Tony out to the left-hand side. Tony, again, excellent in that game last week against Missouri. But great defensive coverage by number 32 for the Georgia Bulldogs. Trask in the shotgun alone in the backfield. He's got Malik Davis to his left and three receivers out to his right. Trask takes a snap, looking left. He's going to throw that way, and it is caught! What a catch by Malik Davis deep downfield, and the Gators got the first down. Excellent job by Kyle Trask there to put that ball in a perfect spot. He, and a great run by Malik Davis, who just burned his man and then made a diving catch. And the Florida Gators offense is out there rolling after a three and out on their first drive. Here's Trask in the shotgun. 
He's going to hand this one off. It's Naquan right this time. He's got a few yards in the play, about five. There's the Gators utilizing all three of their running backs once again. And it's going to be second in five here for the Gators. And it looks like Sam Bennett is now heading to the locker room. This is a huge turn of events here for the Bulldogs. Here's a snap thrown off to Tony. Tony tries to make a move. He's immediately taken down, though. Excellent defensive coverage by number one for the for the Bulldogs there, he was able to jump up right on that play. Yeah, Bennett heading to the locker room. So after two excellent drives for Bennett, he's going to come out of this game after he took a big shot at the end of that second drive. And it's number two for the Bulldogs. Daywan Mathis warming up on the sidelines. But right now it's Kyle Trask and company looking to try to tie this game with 3.32 left to go in the first quarter. It's third and four. Trask in the shotgun, Naquan right to his right-hand side. Trask takes a snap. He's going to hand it off to the right, right up the middle. He's got some room to run, and he's got the first down yardage. An excellent run by Naquan right in the offensive line. Opened up some holes. So the first down for the Gators with 3.16 left to go in the first quarter. Gators have been excellent on offense after that first drive. as They continue to push up the field. Now, what a game so far. We had that 75-yard touchdown run on the first play of the game. Here's Trask in the shotgun. Tony in motion. Here's the snap. They fake the handoff. Trask now throwing out to his right side. That ball is caught. It's Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts still going, and he's brought down. What a run, and what a pass by Kyle. Trask to Pitts. It's that Kyle to Kyle connection. Kyle Pitts just went out to the right side there. And Trask put it in a spot where only Pitts could catch it. He had to go back a little bit for that ball, actually, and leap up there. Excellent catch by Kyle Pitts. We haven't seen too much of him in these last couple of games, but makes an excellent play right there. And the Gators now on the five-yard line. And it's going to look like we have a timeout here. Kyle Trask is hyped up. He's excited. He loves what he sees from his team. We're going to take a quick break. As the Gators look to try and punch this one in, Bulldogs lead it 14 to 7. You've been listening to the University of Florida Student Broadcast Network. Welcome back to Jacksonville, Florida, here at the world's largest outdoor cocktail party. We've had a fantastic game so far, and it's only the first quarter, 225 left to go. In the opening quarter, Georgia Bulldogs lead it 14 to 7, but it's the Gators on the five, their own five yard, or the Bulldogs five yard line, excuse me. Threatening to tie this game. Here's Kyle Trask in the shotgun. He's got going to his right, and here's the pass. And that ball is tipped and incomplete. That one intended for Jacob Copeland. So the Gators will go now second in goal with 220. They tried to hit Copeland there on a quick slant route. The ball went off of his hands and incomplete. Probably expect, though, Copeland to have that ball. Second and call. Kirby Smart barking out some orders to his defense as they try to hold the Gators here to potentially a field goal. Kyle Trask takes a snap. He's going to fake the handoff. He's going to run with it. Bounce out to the left side. And he's stopped short of the goal line. But he gets all the way down to the two. And now that's going to bring up third and goal for the Gators. As they fake the handoff to, that was Pierce that he faked the handoff to. So Pierce back in the game. He seems to be okay. Meanwhile, for the Bulldogs, they just had Bennett go out of this game. He into the locker room. We'll see if he's back out in time for this next drive. Meanwhile, though, it's Kyle Trask. Takes a snap. He's going to hand it off to Damian Pierce, and he's in for the touchdown. And the Florida Gators are now an extra point away from tying this game. What a start to this one. Very simple play, Kyle Trask. Hands it off to Damian Pierce. The offensive line pushes the Bulldogs' defensive line all the way into the end zone. So Pierce just had to walk his way in there. And after a terrible start for the Florida Gators, they have made an excellent response and have now are just an extra point away from tying the game. So now McPherson up for the extra point with 1.43 left to go in this first quarter. 
Extra point is up and it is good to the Florida Gators. Have tied this at 14 with a minute 43 left to go in the first quarter. We'll be back after this. You've been listening to the University of Florida Student Broadcast Network. Welcome back here to the University of Florida Student Broadcast Network. My name is Jake Ricker. Georgia Bulldogs had a lead of 14-0 in this one, but now the Gators have tied it at 14 with just a minute 43 left to go in the first quarter. This is the most combined points in the first quarter since 1942 between these two teams. And it's been an excellent start. Lots of back and forth. Like we said, Georgia Bulldogs got to the excellent start with that 75-yard touchdown run from Zamir White. As the Gators look to kick this one off. And then the G Georgia defense got a three and out. That one goes out of bounds there. So it's going to be a touchback for the Bulldogs. And then we had Seston Bennett take a huge hit from number 22 on the Florida Gators defense. Bennett was shaken up. He's being looked at by trainers. He eventually left. And now it looks like he may not be back in this game. Who knows for how long? So a huge turn of events in this game. But again, as we mentioned, the three and out for the Florida Gators offense. And then that's when Bennett took that hit on the next try. They still scored a touchdown. So it's Dewan Mathis in for the game for the Bulldogs. And then quickly before the snap, the Gators then drove down for the offensive score. They held there. The Florida Gators defense held the Bulldogs offense. And now we're tied. Here's the first play with Mathis in. It's a snap and a handoff around the side. And he's brought out of bounds there. Excuse me. That was number seven, Jameer Burton on the reverse jet sweep. So minute 31, Mathis looking to try to lead this Bulldogs team now after Bennett came out of this game. Mathis will go under center. On second and 11. Takes a snap. It's going to be a handoff. And it's Cox Jr. He can't bring him down, though. Still on his feet and finally brought down. Just about a yard shy is Jameer Burton. Cox Jr. nearly had Burton in the backfield. And Cox Jr. had his helmet came off. He's a little shaken up. He's able to get up, though, and head off the field. So another Burton went in motion and got the handoff. Gets away somehow from Cox Jr. Stays on his feet after two hits. And it is finally thrown out of bounds there. Just shy of the first. It's going to be officially third and one. And Cook and White now check back into the game. For the Georgia Bulldogs. They're one for two so far today on third down conversions. 52 seconds left in the go in the first as we're tied at 14. Gators defense look like they have some more confusion. The Bulldogs snap it and another timeout. I presume taken by the Florida Gators. So the Gators defense, despite having an excellent three and out before they tied this game. Actually, we, so there was a whistle because the previous play is currently under review, I believe, for the spot of the ball to see if he did indeed get that first down. I'm actually not 100% sure what they're looking at here. Oh, they're looking to see if Burton was down. As one of the Gators defenders took a dive to try and make the tackle. And Burton did get tripped up. It looks like his knee, knee might have touched the ground. So he could be down way back. And this would make it a little bit longer of a third down for the Bulldogs. So... I mean, what, what a game so far we've had in this one. I'm trying to recap it, but Bulldogs have been going quickly. Let's quickly. So, again, Bulldogs got that 75 yard touchdown in the first play of the game. Then the Gators' offense went three and out. Georgia Bulldogs drove back down the field. Bennett threw a bullet touchdown pass to Rosemary Jack Saint, who got injured on the play, was stretched off the field. And then Bennett was shaken up. He went on the sidelines was eventually brought out of the game. Meanwhile, the Gators offense was able to drive down the field after a three and out, score their touchdown after a beautiful pass. 
to Justin Shorter, and then it was Damian Pierce to score on the second drive to the Gators. Defense got a three and out for the Georgia Bulldogs offense. So Bennett has now come back out, and he's grabbed his helmet. So Bennett back on the field. Looks like he's okay. I presume will come in after this next play. But right now it's Mathis on 37 with 47 seconds left to go. Good news for Georgia Bulldogs fans to see Bennett come back out there. Mathis in the shotgun. He's got White to his left. Mathis takes a snap, looking left. He's going to throw. This ball is caught, and the Gators trip him up, and he's down. It was number 10, Kyrus Jackson on the catch, but he falls short of the third down, and the Gators get another huge three and out. It was just a short pass here to Kyrus Jackson. He was tripped up by number six, for the Florida Gators. I believe it was Keller Elam. Although I'm not 100% sure on that. Couldn't quite get a good look at the number there. So, and the refs are signaling that's the end of the first quarter. So what a quarter it was. We are tied at 14 here at the world's largest outdoor cocktail party. You've been listening to the Florida Gators Student Broadcast Network. We'll be back after these messages. Welcome back to the University of Florida Student Broadcast Network. My name's Jake Ricker here in Jacksonville, Florida, as the number eight Florida Gators are taking on the number five Georgia Bulldogs. And we are tied at 14 at the end of the first quarter. And if you're just now joining us, what a game it has been so far. Lots of back and forth. Bulldogs got that 75-yard touchdown run from Zamir White on the first play of the game. Burton then with a bullet of a pass to Rosemary Jackson to get the second touchdown and go up 14-0. But Rosemary Saint was stretched off the field after his foot went in the wrong direction. And then just a couple play layers, Bennett would also head to the locker room. Meanwhile, the Gators then turn things around as they got things going on their offensive side of the ball. And the Gators drove down the field and got the touchdown to Justin Shorter. And then the Gators' defense was able to make a huge three and out stop. And the Gators' offense went down the field and tied the game with just about a minute left to go, or two minutes, under two minutes left to go in the first quarter as it was. Damian Pierce, who ran it in for the score. You know, here we are tied at 14. It was Dewan Mathis who had to come in the game for the Georgia Bulldogs, but now Benny is back out on the field. He is good to go. And now Georgia, or excuse me, the Gators, looking to come back out here and extend or get their first lead of the game. So a crazy game it has been. It's only been the first quarter as we get ready here to start the second quarter in just a couple of minutes. As the Bulldogs are now punting this one away here on fourth and two. And here is the punt. It's Canarius Tony waiting back to receive this one. He'll wait for the fair catch and take it at about the 16-yard line. So Kyle Trask will head back out on to the field, and his offense will look to try and take first lead for the Gators in this game so far. And, you know, I'll tell you what, you know, we can, who knows what's going to happen in this one so far with so many back and forth so far. We've had two players go out to injury, one of them come back, one of them being Georgia Bulldogs star quarterback. In Bennett. So meanwhile, though, Trask out on the field. Damian Pierce to his right-hand side. Tony in motion, rolling out to the right. Trask takes a snap, looking right. He's going to throw that way. It's caught by Tony. He's out of bounds for a gain of about four yards on the play. That'll bring up second down, second and five, with 14.48 left to go in the second quarter. 
Gators have really done an excellent job, or Kyle Trask specifically, at utilizing all of his players. We've seen third string tight ends come into this game and make some plays. We've seen all three of the running backs make plays. As here on second and five, Trash takes his snap. He's going to hand it off to Damian Pierce to the right side who busts through one player and is brought down for a gain of about three on the play. And that's going to bring up third down for the Gators. Kyle Trash started 0 for 3 in this game. Since then, he's been 9 for 10 with 117 yards and a touchdown. So after a tough start, Gators got right back to where they left things off and are rolling right now here tied at 14. Kyle Trask in the shotgun with Pierce to his right. Tony moves in motion again to the left side. Here's the pass. Trask looking to the right. Steps up. Now throws. That ball is caught. And they got the first down. It's Justin Shorter on the grab. And the Gators continue their hot streak. Gators are now four for five on third down conversions. Same kind of play there as the last one. Just a simple out route to the right. And Shorter's able to grab that. Shorter with two receptions for 18 yards and a touchdown so far in this game. He's been excellent. Trash back in the shotgun with Damian Pierce. Or excuse me, Malik Davis to his left. It's going to be a handoff to Davis. Davis tries to cut up the middle. He's met by multiple Georgia Bulldogs linemen and he's brought down for no gain. So second and 10 now for the Gators with 13-11 left to go in the second quarter. We're tied at 14. It, it has been a back and forth game. Gators right now at the 28-yard line. Their own 28-yard line. Trask in the shotgun. Malik Davis to his left. Two receivers out to his right, one to his left. Here's the handoff. It's to Davis, and Davis once again met at the line for a gain of zero. So that's going to bring up third and ten, a long third down for the Gators. And hurry up offense. Gators moving quickly here. Trask in the shotgun. He takes a snap, drops back. He's pressured, throws, and that ball is intercepted. It's picked off by the Bulldogs. And now he's running back the other way. Let's see how far he can get. He's going. He can go all the way. Touchdown, Bulldogs. Oh my goodness, the Gators tried to go hurry up offense. Trask made a mistake, and it was picked off and returned for a touchdown. This game cannot get any crazier. That was number 27, Eric Stokes on the interception. It was supposed to be a slant route, and it looked like the Gators receiver... Number three, he, he, he just kind of stopped on the play. Meanwhile, Stokes kept running with it. Now, extra point now for the Bulldogs is up and good. So the Bulldogs take a 21-14 lead. And this game just gets crazier and crazier. You've been listening to the University of Florida Student Broadcast Network. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to the Florida Gator, excuse me, the University of Florida Student Broadcast Network. My name's Jake Ricker here in Jacksonville, Florida at the world's largest outdoor cocktail party. The number eight Florida Gators are taking on the number five Georgia Bulldogs. What a thriller of a game we've got so far today. And it's only the start of the second quarter, 12-17 left to go. Before the end of the first half, the Bulldogs lead it 21-14 to after Eric Stokes just returned an interception for a touchdown. Trask threw that ball. It was intended for Xavier Hernandez, or Henderson, excuse me. And it looked like Henderson kind of just stopped on his route. Meanwhile, Stokes stepped in front and took the pick. Here's the kickoff from the Bulldogs, and that ball is whoop, way out of the end zone. So the Gator will take it back for a touchback. So Kyle Trask will come back out onto the field and hope to prevent these mistakes and now try to tie this game up again. If we take a look at the replay here, Hender Henderson went on the slant route. I think Trask might have been looking for Tony, who was on a curl. And then Henderson just kind of stopped, though. Take a look at it again. Makes the move. He just, yeah, see what happens there. That's a great play by Eric Stokes because Henderson was turning back on the right to try and make Stokes cut with him. If he does that, he's... 
Trask has Tony on the call route, but Stokes saw it and jumped up on the play and made the interception. So I thought that was a mistake by Henderson. That's actually an excellent play by Eric Stokes there. Ranger Georgia Bulldogs on the play. It's number 22 as he limps off the field, off on his own power, though. So it's first and 10 for the Gators. And Kyle Trask will look to try and prevent that mistake and try and tie this game as the Bulldogs lead it by seven by a score of 21-14 with 12-17 left to go in the second quarter. You know, I really don't know what else we could see in this game or to get any better. What a game has it has been. But in 2020, you really just never know what's going to happen. So it's Kyle Trask in the shotgun. He takes the snap, drops back. Trask looking to his right. Here's the throw. It's Naquan Wright. He's got some room to run and some speed. Naquan Wright all the way downfield. What a run by Naquan Wright. Kyle Trask hit him on the outside with speed. Excellent throw. And Naquan Wright took it all the way down to about the 25-yard line, and the Gators now right back just outside of the red zone trying to respond. Trask in the shotgun, takes a snap, jumps back. Trask looking to his right-hand side. He's going to throw. That ball is up, and it's caught for the touchdown. Kyle Pitts leaps up and makes an excellent grab, and the Gators might have just tied this game. There is a flag on the play. I cannot believe this game. This has got to be one of the best games I have ever seen between the Gators and the Bulldogs. Excellent play by Kyle Pitts to get up there and make that catch. And it's a pass interference call on the Bulldogs. So the penalty is declined. And the Gators are an extra point away from tying the game at 21. It's a 25-yard touchdown pass from Trask to Pitts. It's that Kyle to Kyle connection. Excellent play. Pitts has been so good in those first three games. He had the seven touchdowns. It was kind of quiet the next two, but he's been excellent in this game. He's got two receptions for 59 yards and a touchdown. He's got to go up. He's got a Bulldogs defender all over him, and he's still able to make that play. Extra point is up, and it is good. So the Gators have now tied it at 21. With 11.38 left to go in the second quarter, you've been listening to the University of Florida Student Broadcast Network. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to the University of Florida Student Broadcast Network. My name is Jake Ricker here in Jacksonville, Florida at TIAA Bank Stadium here for the world's largest outdoor cocktail party. It's been a thriller of a game and that's probably an understatement as we are tied 21 to 21 as the Gators kick this one off to the Georgia Bulldogs. And that kick is up and the Georgia Bulldogs are gonna take this one back it's going to be Jackson on the return. He's brought down, though. And no huge run back for him this time. So here comes Justin Bennett back on the field after missing the last drive. After he took a big hit from Florida Gators defender, Mathis had to come in for a drive. Went three and out, but now Bennett back on the field. In his first two drives, he had two touchdowns. So he'll look to try to get that back and going for this Georgia Bulldogs offense and take the Bulldogs lead back. 11.32 left to go in the second quarter, tied at 21. Bennett in the shotgun. Here's the snap, it's gonna be a handoff. Short run, he's brought down immediately by multiple Gators defenders. Maybe a gain of one on the play. That was number 22 on the run for the Georgia Bulldogs. And we got an injured Gator on the field on that right-hand side. I believe that was Burton Jer Jeremine for the Bulldogs on the run. I can't see who the Gator is down on the field. It was Milton Kendall on the run for the Bulldogs. 
And it looks like it is number two, I believe. That is Stewart Jr. That's a tough loss there for the Gators. He's been excellent for them so far. And it, it is Stewart Jr. that is down currently. As we take a look, see, try to see what happened here. Junior Junior went kind of he went low to try and make the tackle and he hit his head on his own player. I think he just got shaky. He actually, he's holding his arm there on that right hand side for possibly it looks like it could be an arm injury or a possible rib injury. I'm not quite sure. He's going into the tent. So to get off his own power though. So second and nine though for the Bulldogs. Bennett looks to try and get his offense rolling. Bennett in the shotgun with Cook to his right-hand side. Bennett takes a snap. Play action play. Bennett throwing downfield. The ball is caught. What a catch by Curious Jackson downfield. He's got the first down. Georgia Bulldogs just continue to drive, Bennett now here, play action pass again, Bennett stepping up, throwing deep downfield, and it is dropped just down incomplete. That ball intended for number five, Matt Landers. But the, the throw is just a little too deep on that. A little bit of contact right at the end there by the Gators defenders, but no flag, so it's going to bring up third down here for the Bulldogs. It's number six on the coverage for the Gators defense. Nevertheless, it's going to be Bennett in the shotgun. He takes this one. It's going to be a handoff. And the Gators immediately bring him down. Zamir White's got nowhere to go, and the Gators force another huge three and out. Actually, I apologize. I believe this is now going to bring up third down, so still another down to go. My mistake. Yes, it's going to be third and 11 now for the Bulldogs, so this is a big third down. Bennett, 72% completion this season on third down. Bennett takes a snap, drops back, looking over the middle. He's going to step up after some pressure. Now throws the ball, and it is incomplete. It was too high, intended for number seven. Jameer Burton and the Gators now force a three and out. So another, nonetheless, a huge stop by the Florida Gators. And their offense will get to come back to work. We're going to take a quick break. Actually, no, excuse me. we're going to stay here as the Bulldogs look to punt this one away. And Tony waiting back for this punt. He calls for the fair catch, and he's got it at just about the 19-yard line. So now Kyle Trask back on the field for the second time in a tie game. He's going to look to try and take the lead this time. We'll be back after this, Gators and the Bulldogs. A top 10 matchup in Jacksonville, tied at 21. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to the University of Florida Student Broadcast Network. My name's Jake Ricker here in Jacksonville, Florida. We got the number eight Florida Gators taking on the number five Georgia Bulldogs. What a game it has been is we are currently tied at 21 with 9.39 left to go in the second quarter. We've had deep touchdown plays, 75-yard runs, pick sixes, quarterbacks coming out of the game for injury, then coming back in the game. We've had it all, folks, here in what I would say is probably one of the best Florida-Georgia games I have seen in a long, long time. As in just a couple of minutes here, the Kyle Trask and company will come back on the field looking to try and take 
the lead. Last time, though, they were tied at 14 and the offense came out. It was a pick six. Which gave the Bulldogs a 21-14 lead. But now they have a chance to try and get the lead this time. So Kyle Trask on first and 10, 9.39 left to go in the second quarter. Trask, 12 completions today, 196 yards, two touchdowns and interception. Trash takes a snap, play action pass, rolling out a little bit to his right. He's going to throw deep downfield. That ball is caught. It's Malik Davis down at just shy of the 40. What a throw by Kyle Trask to his running back, Malik Davis. And now an injured bulldog limps off the field there. Malik Davis took the fake handoff and then just ran. Nobody could cover him. Trash took a big hit at the end of that play there. But he quickly gets his team to the line as he's alone in the backfield here. Three receivers out to his right, two to his left. Here's Tony, who move in motion now to the right of Trash. Trash takes a snap. It's going to be a handoff to Tony. Tony makes a move and gains about one on the play. So that'll bring about second and nine for the Gators. Kyle Trask has been so good at some of those deep balls tonight and putting them in just excellent spots to where only his receivers can get it. And all these receivers have made excellent plays. Here's Trask stepping back, throwing up to the middle, and the ball is cut. No, it's dropped incomplete. Kyle Pitts took a big hit there. By number 16 for the Georgia Bulldogs. We get some pushing and shoving going on here. A helmet came off of number 16. He looks shaken up. He might have a concussion. Pitts now down on the field. And the Gators do not want to get another brawl. Both coaches out there, their coaching staff, getting their guys back. That is so Pitts, Pitts down on the field shaking up right now. He took a huge hit at the end of that play. We'll see what the aftermath is here. There is a flag on the play. Referee's currently discussing. Remember, it is raining here in Jacksonville as well. So not only you have a crazy game, but you got the elements playing into it. So here's the call. It's going to be a personal foul. Hit to the helmet. Targeting on Georgia. So a huge penalty there. Let's take a look at this replay. Ball was intended deep down. They feel there for Kyle Pitts. And oh my. It, oh yeah. Yep, that is direct helmet to helmet content. Contact. And Kyle Pitts, he had the he caught the ball. It was a little loose, and then that hit just made the ball fly out. That's a very dangerous play there to lead with your helmet. It's a bad play by the Georgia Bulldogs defender there. I believe it was Cream who had the hit. Kyle Pitts is did get up. They're reviewing for targeting right now. And number 16 has been thrown out of the game for the Bulldogs. He's currently in a tent, though, as after his helmet came off, he kind of got up and, and was walking around funny. And that's why you can't have those kinds of plays because it is not only dangerous for the person receiving the hit, but it's dangerous for the person giving the hit. And, and that's, that's why you get those penalties, a very dangerous hit. You cannot lead with your head. So it's going to be first and 10 for the Gators here. Trask, I, I'm not sure if Pitts would have had that pass. He did fumble it a little bit. But the, whole, the hit definitely jarred it loose. So here's Trask under center with Pierce behind him. Makes the snap. It's going to be a handoff to Pierce. Pierce bounces out to the left side. And he's got about three yards on the play. It 
And there's number 16 heading off the field right now after he was ejected on that play. So it's, it's Lewis Sign. Lewis Sign has been ejected after that targeting hit. And now the Gators looking to try and take the lead. Here's Trask. He's going to throw this ball. And the ball is caught. Touchdown, Gators. It's Justin Shorter. He was all alone on the left-hand side. And Trask put it right where he needed to. Excellent job there by the Gators. It was actually, excuse me, it was the backup tight end, Keymore Gamble, not Shorter. Gamble, who come, came in for Pitts, who was out of the game after that hit, ran out to the left-hand side. No one picked him up, and he gets the touchdown. So, again, I apologize for that. It was not just in Shorter, but Keymore Gamble. The extra point is now up, and it is good. Kyle Trask is excited. He's hyping up the sidelines. So the Gators lead it 28-21 now. In the second quarter with 7.44 to go. You've been listening to the University of Florida Student Broadcast Network. We'll be back after this. Welcome back here inside TIAA Bank Stadium here in Jacksonville, Florida. As the Florida Gators are taking on the Georgia Bulldogs in the world's largest outdoor cocktail party. One of the greatest rival games we have in the SEC. Kyle Pitts is currently headed off to the locker room after he took a hit to the head from number 16, Syme, who got ejected for targeting. Pitts is walking off on his own, though, but I would assume being treated for concussions. The Gators kicking this one off to the Bulldogs after they got a touchdown from the backup tight end, Keymore Gamble. That ball is out of the end zone. It'll be a touchback for the Bulldogs there. We're looking at the play again there. There were two. It was double coverage for Kyle Pitts. Kyle Trask made an excellent throw, still caught the ball. It was starting to come loose a little bit, and then Sign came in out of nowhere. And just head-butted. Kyle Pitts and jarred that ball loose. But Gators do get the score. So it's first and 10 for the Bulldogs here. 7.44 left to go. Gators lead it 28-21. Bennett in the shotgun with White to his right. Takes a snap. Fakes the pitch. Now throws downfield. That ball is caught and it's dropped. Fitzpatrick had that ball deep downfield, had some room to run to, but he dropped it. And that's a big mistake right there by the Bulldogs offense. A good play. He had a lot of room to run there. It was only number six for the Gators defense. Sean Davis, who was anywhere near him, but he drops the ball. So it's going to be second and ten now on their own 25-yard line. Betting in the shotgun with White to his left. He's got two receivers out to his left-hand side. Takes a snap, drops back. White looking to his left. He's throwing deep downfield, and he just misses his man. It was shorter, or excuse me, Curious Jackson, who was wide open. He had his man beat, and if he catches that, again, that's probably a touchdown. So a drop pass, and now an overthrow from Bennett. And the Bulldogs now face third and 10, and they could have easily potentially had six on both those plays. Gators will look to try and stand tall here. Got another huge third and out. Bennett in the shotgun with White to his right. Three receivers out to his left, and one to his right. Bennett takes a snap, drops back. He's pressured. He gets away, though, to his right-hand side. Throws it's caught by White, but he's well short of the first down. And that'll bring up fourth down for the Bulldogs. Great job by this Florida Gators defense. Keeping the Bulldogs at bay here. And the Bulldogs will punt that ball away. There you see Bennett saying it was his fault. On that overthrow, I assume, to Curious Jackson. Bulldogs will punt this one away. 
Kadoria is Tony waiting back for it. He's going to grab it about the five. And he's going to run with this one. He's trying to make some moves. And he's wrapped up and he's brought down. So Kadoria's Tony does not call for the fair catch. And the Gators went off to start at the five yard line. An excellent punt by the Bulldogs. That was Jake Kamada on the punt. And Kadarius Tony made a mistake there. He he stepped back to catch that, did not call for the fair catch. And the Gators offense is going to have to start from the five-yard line, but it has been a problem here for Kyle Trask and company so far as after that three and out on that first drive, it's been nothing but touchdowns for this Gators team. Touchdown passes to Gamble Shorter and a handoff touchdown for Damian Pierce. Here's Trask now on the five. It's going to be play action pass. Throwing that ball is caught. This time it's Shorter. And he's got 13 on the play. Excellent job by Justin Shorter. So it's going to be first down and 10 on the quick play action slant route there to Justin Shorter. Excellent job by the Gators offense to get themselves some yardage. They're at the ninth, their own 19-yard line. 6.25 left to go in the second quarter. Gators lead it 28-21. Tony in motion. It's going to be a handoff to Tony. Tony cuts back, dancing around in the backfield there, and he's finally brought down. A huge play by the Bulldogs defense. That was Johnson, the second on the tackle. It's second and 13 now for the Gators. So, Gators are stopped there after the big play. And then it's going to bring up Second and 13 officially on the Florida's own 15. Trash takes a snap, drops back, thrown out to his right. That ball is caught by Pierce. He's got some room to run, and he's all the way down past the first down yard marker and a lot more. Damian Pierce. I'm not sure who it was, but a Georgia Bulldogs defender dove to make the tackle on Pierce and completely missed him, and Pierce took off downfield. It was number 20 for the Bulldogs who tried to make that tackle, that was Major Burns. And that's a costly missed tackle there, which ended up giving Pierce the first down and a lot more. Of an injured Gator down on the field, it looks to be number 51. It's Stuart Reese, the right guard for the Gators. Gator offensive line has been excellent so far in this game, so uh, not an injury you want to see for the Gators. He is able to get up, though, and he's going to walk off on his own power there. Now, I mean, this has been just quite the game. I don't know if there is a word to describe this game so far. 28-21, the Gators lead it with 5.38 left to go in the second quarter. We haven't even got done with the first half yet. And looks like Reese might have, uh, might have been in a right shoulder injury as he's being looked at by trainers on the sidelines now so it's first and 10 for the Gators Trask out of the game it's going to be Emery Jones who checks in haven't seen him much this season Emery Jones in the shotgun he's got a receiver out to his right two to his left and he takes his snap he's going to hand it off to Pierce but there's a flag on the play looks like it'd be offsides on the Georgia Bulldogs You know, it's a full start on Florida. Emory Jones was clapping after that, so I thought the penalty was going to go to Georgia, but it's going to be a false start for the Gators. So that's going to back him up five yards and make it first in 15. So Jones will remain in the game here on first and 15 with 5-11 left to go in the second quarter. Three receivers out to Jones' left. Jones alone in the backfield. Takes a snap. Jones, he's going to run with it. Up the middle. He's got some room to run, and he gains a nice gain of about six yards on the play. That's what we've seen Emory Jones do best every time he comes in. It's a direct snap and a quarterback run. Kyle Trask now checks back into the game on second and eight for the Gators. Four forty left to go in this second quarter. Gators looking to extend their seven-point lead. 
Kyle Trask in the shotgun with Pierce to his right. Three receivers punched up left. Trash takes a snap, drops back, rolling out to his right now. Here's the throw. It's caught by Pierce, and he's up just shy of the first down yard marker. It's going to bring up about third and two on the play. Taking a look at it, Dan Mullen, who has been an excellent coach. He's coached the likes of Alex Smith, Tim Tebow, and Dak Prescott, all who made it to the NFL. And Tim Tebow obviously, you know, didn't make it long in the NFL, but a legendary career with the Florida Gators. And now it's Kyle Trask who's looking like a bright star under Dan Mullen. Trask under center with Pierce in the backfield. Here's the snap. We're going to hand it off to Pierce. Pierce bounced out to the left side. He's got the first down and more, and he's finally brought down. But not before he picks up the first. And I'll give the Gators a new set of downs here. With under... Four minutes to go in the second quarter. So first and ten for the Gators. Pierce now checking out of the game. And it's going to be Malik Davis who checks in. Trask in the shotgun with Davis to his right. Two receivers out to his left and one to his right. Tony in motion. Here's the snap. It's going to be a handoff to Malik Davis. He makes a move and only gains about one on the play there. So that'll bring up second and nine for the Gators. Excellent job by this Florida Gators offense so far. Ever since that three and out, they've just been dominant right back to where they were for this whole entire season, really. And the defense has held up pretty well so far. Only 14 points given up so far to a decent Georgia Bulldogs offense. Here's the snap, Trask. Throwing over the middle, and it is dropped by Kadarius Tony. It's right there down at the first down yard marker, but that's going to bring up 39 for the Gators on the Georgia 34. You look at this Georgia Bulldogs defense, touchdowns allowed. They only allowed one against Arkansas, none against Auburn, two against Tennessee, five against Alabama, and then none last week against Kentucky. But four touchdowns today for the Gators. Here's Trask in the shotgun with Malik Davis to his left. Three receivers punched up on that left-hand side. 39. Here's the snap. It's going to be a handoff to Malik Davis. Davis trying to follow some blocks, and he's brought down for a gain of about three on the play. So that's well short of the first down, and that's going to bring up fourth down for the Gators. Fourth and six. And the Gators will send out the punting unit. So for the only second time today, the Gators will not get down on the field and score a touchdown. It's actually going to be McPherson coming out, so they're going to kick the field goal here, excuse me. Be about a 42-yard field goal, I believe. Excuse me, 50-yarder. So 50-yard field goal attempt for Evan McPherson. He's been excellent for the Gators all season. Kick is up. And it is good. An excellent kick from Evan McPherson. And the Florida Gators now lead it 31-21 with a minute 44 left to go in the first half. What a game it has been here in Jacksonville, Florida. You've been listening to the University of Florida Student Broadcast Network. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to the University of Florida Student Broadcast Network. My name is Jake Rooker. The Florida Gators lead the number five Georgia Bulldogs, 31-21 here in the second quarter. With a minute 44 left to go in this half. Gators looking to try and climb their way back up the rankings after a huge loss to Texas A&M a couple weeks ago. They were ranked number three at the time then fell all the way down to number 10. Now currently sitting at number eight. They're going to need a win out and potentially win the SEC championship game if they want a shot at making the national championship. But right now, they got to face the Georgia Bulldogs. And so far, Gators lead it by 10. As McPherson kicks this one off to the Bulldogs, that will go out of the end zone. It's going to be a touchback for the Bulldogs. So the offense got off to a really hard start for this one. But now, they have struggled in these last couple of drives. They're going to try and turn this one away. 
Look at starters lost today. Two for the Bulldogs. Lewis Sign was disqualified for targeting. Their receiver, Marcus Ramsey Jack Saint, was injured on his first career touchdown. And then Kyle Pitts has been out of the game since the hit and has not returned. So here come the Georgia Bulldogs offense. Starting at their own 25-yard line, Bennett in the shotgun with Cook to his right. Bennett drops back, looking left. Now throws over the middle. The ball is caught. No, it's dropped. That one intended for Washington. And he was not able to hold on to that ball. You think, you know, one thing we haven't mentioned is the Georgia Bulldogs are without receiver George Pickens who led the team in receiving touchdowns with just two. But the wide receiver core has not been able to get much done here for the Bulldogs so far and already down a couple of more guys, specifically Marcus Ramsey Jackson after that first touchdown. Bennett takes a snap. He drops back on the play, steps up now. He's pressured, and the Gators bring him down behind the line of scrimmage. He actually might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, but nonetheless, it's going to be third and ten for the Bulldogs. Gators defense did a great job of covering in the secondary and some quick pressure from the defensive line forced Bennett to try and step up on the play and was eventually brought down. I believe it was number 55 on that tackle. For the Gators, nonetheless, it's 13-10 with a minute 15 left to go in this second quarter. Bulldogs looking to answer before the end of the half. 21-31, the Gators lead it. Bennett in the shotgun with Cook to his right. He's got Landers out to his right-hand side. And one receiver out to his left. Two receivers out to his left, excuse me. Here's the snap. Bennett drops back, looking left, looking right, throwing deep downfield, and that ball is incomplete. Intended for Landers, and that's going to bring up fourth down, and the Bulldogs will have to punt this ball away. 45 seconds left to go in the half. Heater's still with two timeouts left as well. Been a real tough day for this Georgia Bulldogs offense after getting such to an excellent start. Two touchdowns on their first two drives, including that 75-yard touchdown from Zamir White, but nothing since. So Kamara back out to punt for the Bulldogs. And he boots this one away. Looked like that went off his right-hand foot, and that's going to fall really short. Looked like it might have gone out about around the 50. And no, they're going to mark it all the way up at the 45, the Georgia's 45. So a mistake there from the Bulldogs punter Kamara. Looked like he just pulled that one on the right side of his shoe. And he knew it right away. And now the Gators with two timeouts under a minute to go left in this second, uh, the first half, excuse me. 39 seconds exactly. Have a chance to try and put some more points on the board. Before the end of the half. And Florida's going to get the ball here in the second half as well as they kicked it off to start this game. So it's Kyle Trask in the shotgun. I believe Malik Davis to his right. Three receivers out to his left. One all the way to the right. Trask drops back. Looking right now. Looking left. Throws. That ball is caught. And they got the first down. That was Malik Davis, I believe, on the catch. No, excuse me. I believe it was number 80. Which would be Trent Whittlemore. So first and 10 for the Gators. On Georgia's 48-yard line, 34 seconds left to go in the second quarter. Trask takes a snap, drops back. Looking downfield, he's going to throw, and that ball is incomplete. Intended for Kadarius Toney. There is a flag on the play. The Gators wanted a pass interference call. I think they might get it. Let's see what the call is. Thirty seconds left to go in this first half here in the second quarter. Gators lead it 31-21. So 
So it is going to be a penalty on the Bulldogs. It was going to be a face mask on number 32. Let's take a look and see what happened. Didn't see anything on that specific replay, but nonetheless, it's going to be first and 10 for the Gators. As Trask takes a snap, he's going to hand it off to Malik Davis. Malik Davis bounced out to the right side, and he's got about five on the play before he's brought down. That'll bring up second down for the Gators. 25 seconds left to go, and the Gators will take a timeout. That's their second timeout of the half, which means they got one more to go. So we're going to take a quick break here on the University of Florida Student Broadcast Network. We'll be back after this. Back here as Trash throws this one. This ball is caught by Tony, and he's brought down about a yard short of the first down. So that'll bring up third and one with 16 seconds left in the second quarter. As Trask quickly got that one off, Tony tried to fight for those extra yards. He was thrown down pretty hard there by number seven, Stevenson, for the Bulldogs. Stevenson a little shaken up on the play. So 16 seconds left in the second half. The Gators did use their final timeout there. So no timeouts remaining. And the Gators are on the Bulldogs 14. So they still have a shot at potentially getting in the end zone here, but they're going to have to do it either quickly, get up quickly and, and spike the ball or try to get out of bounds. Probably have one or two, or excuse me, two or three more shots at this, depending on how these plays play out. But it's third and one for the Gators. There's 16 seconds left, trying to extend their 10-point lead before the end of the half. Gators lead at 31-21. And the Gators will get the ball in the second half. Trash in the shotgun with Malik Davis to his left. Kyle Trash, 19 for 25, with 327 yards, three touchdowns and interception. Trash shots back. He's going to throw end zone, and the ball is caught for the touchdown. Trayvon Grimes, what a catch! He went up high. And grabbed that ball, kept his feet in bounds, and the Gators put up six more points before the end of the half. One on one coverage there with Grimes and Taysen Campbell for the Bulldogs. And Grimes just leaped over top of him and made an excellent catch. So, four plays, 48 yards, and just 28 seconds for the Gators on that drive. And now McPherson out for the extra point to try and extend this Gator lead. It is up and it is good. So the Gators now lead it 38-21. What a game it's been. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back after this on the University of Florida Student Broadcast Network. We're back here on the University of Florida Student Broadcast Network. Gator fans here in TIAA Bank Stadium in Jacksonville, Florida, are loving it. Doing the Gator Chump, Kyle Trask, first player in SEC history with four-plus touchdowns in five straight games. Trask continues to break records here in the SEC. He has been unbelievable for the Florida Gators, and Dan Mullen has really turned this offense around since he has come into the program. Gators offense is loving it after they had that rough start at the beginning of the game, but then ever since those first two scores for the Bulldogs, it's been almost all Gators. Did have that one pick six, though, the Bulldogs did. Here's the kickoff from the Gators. Bulldogs going to try to return this, and they'll get back out up to the 25. It was number three on the return, Tyson Campbell. Excellent throw by Kyle Trask on that last drive. Put it up in a corner again where only his guy can go up and get it. And Grimes did an excellent job of going up there and making that catch. So six seconds left in this first half. The Gators will get the ball 
in the second half to start things off. So things are looking good. Bulldogs are just going to go ahead and kneel it to end the half. As the clock runs to zero, so the Florida Gators lead it 38-21. Kyle Trask pumping up the sidelines. We're going to halftime. We'll be back for your halftime show. After these messages, you've been listening to the University of Florida Student Broadcast Network. Welcome back to the University of Florida Student Broadcast Network. My name is Jake Ricker here in Jacksonville, Florida at the world's largest outdoor cocktail party. A little bit of a smaller cocktail party actually here in 2020 with limited fans, but still pretty big. But more importantly, what a game have we had as we welcome into the halftime show is the number eight. Florida Gators are taking on the number five Georgia Bulldogs. The Gators lead it, though, 38-21 at the half. Gators will receive the ball going into next half. Let's recap this game for you real quick. I mean, it has been back and forth. If you're just tuning in now, you have missed quite the game. So to start this one off on the first play of the game, it was Zamir White with a 75-yard touchdown run for the Georgia Bulldogs to put them up 7-0. And then the Gators would go 3-0 on the very next drive, and then Georgia continued driving down the field. And it was Sam Bennett with a touchdown pass to Rosemary Jack Saint to put the Bulldogs up 14-0. However, on that play, Rosemary Jack Saint had a foot injury, was carted off the field. And Bennett actually took a big hit and would later come out of the game. But until then, it was the Florida Gators offense that started driving and turned on the heat. As the Gators drove down the field and it was a touchdown pass from Kyle Trask to Justin Shorter to bring it to 14-7. to then the Gators' defense did their job, forced a three and out. And the Gators' offense came back onto the field. This time it was Davion Pierce, the two-yard touchdown run to tie the game at 14. Then when Trask came back on the field, the next score would be a pick six by Eric Stokes for 37 yards to put the Bulldogs back up 21-14. And then from there on out, it was all Gators. It was Kyle, or it was Excuse me, Kyle Pitts on a 25-yard pass from Kyle Trask to put the Gators up, or excuse me, tie the gate, the Bulldogs at 21. And then it was Gamble with a touchdown pass from Kyle Trask after, remember Kyle Pitts got hurt in this game on a targeting hit from number 16 of the Bulldogs' sign. Then the Gators... Would score one more touchdown at the end of the half with just 11 seconds left. It was Trayvon Grimes this time from Kyle Trask. And the Gators lead it 38-21. So there's your quick game recap so far. The Gators 6 for 9 on third down so far tonight. They have 19 total first downs, 411 total yards of offense. Meanwhile, the Bulldogs only 168 yards of total offense. They're one for six on third downs. It just has not been good for the Bulldogs because since that 75-yard touchdown and scoring their second touchdown, the Bulldogs have only had 30 yards of total offense. The Gators' defense since those first two drives has been absolutely lights out. We've had a lot of storylines with players, too. We mentioned Rosemary Jack Saint, who caught that second touchdown pass for the Bulldogs, he was hurt and put on a stretcher, taken out of the game. Sestin Bennett, the quarterback for the Bulldogs, came out for a drive. And Dewan Mathis had to come in, but Bennett was okay and came back in this game. Kyle Pitts took that shot to the head and is now out of the game. We haven't don't have, not have an update on him currently, but I would imagine he will remain out. And so many Gators have really stepped up in this game, multiple gate really spreading around the ball from Kyle Trask. Shorter, Pitts, Gamble, and Grimes all with touchdowns. And then 
Pierce with the only rushing touchdown so far tonight. Kyle Trask, who set another SEC record with the first quarterback to have four plus touchdowns in five games in a row. He is 20 for 26 with 341 yards, four touchdowns, and one interception today. He has been absolutely lights out. So moving forward here, though, in the second half, remember the Gators are going to get the ball. And for the Gators, you really just got to keep up what you're doing right now. I mean, the offense is rolling. If you can try to just continue that, build the lead, and try to put this one out of reach as quickly as possible. And if the Gators' defense can continue to do what they're doing, they've done an excellent job on third down and shutting the Bulldogs' offense down. The Gators have a very good shot at potentially upsetting number five, Georgia Bulldogs. Meanwhile, for the Bulldogs, they've got to get things turned around, obviously. They've got to get back, at least for the offense, to what they were doing in that first half, or the, the first two drives, excuse me, where they had Zamir White for a 75-yard touchdown, touchdown run. And, but since that touchdown run, Zamir White only has one extra yard on the ground. So maybe you want to try and get that ball back to him on the ground game. White does have one seven-yard catch with that. But other than that, nothing going for him. And we saw, too, on the last couple of drives for the Bulldogs, or the last drive specifically, Seston Bennett had a missed throw to one of his receivers who could have had a touchdown. It was, I believe, Curious Jackson, and then they also had a huge drop ball. So the offense needs to get rolling here, and the Georgia Bulldogs see if needs to find a way to at least hold the Gators to some field goals if they want a shot. So a crazy game so far. Gators are looking good. Georgia looking to make some second-half adjustments and make this game a little bit closer. Players are coming back out, out of the tunnels, onto the field to get ready right for this second half. So we're going to take another break, and we'll be back. And on the other side, we have the second half of the world's largest outdoor cocktail party here in Jacksonville, Florida. You've been listening to the University of Florida's Student Broadcast Network. Welcome back on the University of Florida Student Broadcast Network. My name is Jake Crecker. Here in Jacksonville, Florida, as the number eight Florida Gators are leading the number five Georgia Bulldogs by a score of 38 to 21. Both teams back out on the field, ready to start this second half. The Gators will receive the ball as Georgia kicks that one off and it is out of the end zone. So the Gators will start on their own 25 yard line. We just saw Georgia Bulldogs receiver Rosemary Jack Saint come back out on the field in a cast with some crutches. So a potentially broken ankle, I would believe, for him in an unfortunate situation. But he is here supporting his team. And they're going to need it right now as they're down 38-21. And the defense is going to need to try and make a stop. As Kyle Trask is back out on the field. Trask in the shotgun with Damian Pierce to his left. Grimes in motion. Trask takes a snap. Play action. Trask throwing out to his right. That ball is caught and pushed out of bounds is number 89, Justin Shorter. And the offense picks right back where it left off on that 11-yard passing play. Kyle Trask did an excellent job tonight, really spreading the ball out around to all of his guys. Trask in the shotgun here with Pierce to his right. Grimes again in motion. Curious Tony out to the left. In the slot for the Gators. Trask takes a snap. He's going to play action throw, and it's cut by Grimes again on the slant route, and the Gators have another first down. With 13.42 left to go in the third quarter. Kyle Trash just does not look like he can be stopped right now. Just constantly breaking SEC records. He's already got 368 yards and four touchdowns in this game. Does have the one pick. But nevertheless, it's first and 10 for the Gators on Georgia's 48. Trask in the shotgun. Pierce to his right. Kadarius Tony out to the left. And Grimes to his right. Trask takes a snap, play action, looking to his right. Trask now steps up. He's going to throw. That ball's caught by Tony, and he's brought down 
for a 12-yard gain. Another first down pickup for the Florida Gators. It's been play action, play action, play action, and Trash did an excellent job of stepping up and making a throw right over the middle to Kadarius Tony, who's at excellent speed, and it just doesn't seem like any of these Georgia defenders can stick with him. And this Georgia Bulldogs defense has been pretty good over the season so far, so Trask going up to the line, letting his team know his orders. Trask in the shotgun takes a snap. He's going to hand it off. This time Pierce gets it, and Pierce gets about one, maybe two on the play before he's brought down. Kyle Trask, if you look at his first half passing chart, he's four for four on 15 plus yards. And a touchdown. He has just been excellent on those deep balls, especially. I think he's only missed about one pass on the deep ball, if I'm not mistaken. So second and nine for the Gators. Trask under center. Pierce in the backfield. Three receivers bunched out up to the right for Trask. Tony in motion. Fakes the handoff to Tony, not to Pierce. And Pierce, nowhere to go. Falls down and gets about one yard on the play. So that'll bring up third and eight for the Gators. Samir White had that 75-yard touchdown run in on the first play of the game. Only one yard on the ground since then. Kyle Trask, first player in SEC history, to throw four-plus touchdowns in the first five games. As he continues to set records here, and now third and nine for him here. He's in the shotgun, takes the snap, drops back. Trask looking pressured. He's got to throw it, and it's incomplete. Nobody home, so despite a... Fast drive from the Gators. The Georgia Bulldogs are able to get a stop, and the Gators will have to punt this ball away. And really, this is just bad protection from the offensive line. About three defenders just blew right through the Gators' offensive line and nearly got to Kyle Trask, which is why he had to force that ball out quickly. There's another injury for the Gators here. This time, it's number 58. The right tackle, that's Jason DeLance. And remember, earlier in this game, Stuart Reese also went off with an injury in this game. So if DeLance is to come out of this game, the Gators will be down two starting offensive linemen, both on that right side, which would also partly explain why this offensive line struggled, at least on that last play. DeLance is able to get off on his own power. He's going to head to the sidelines. Looks like he might be headed to the locker room, actually, because he's running towards, I believe, the Georgia sideline. Meanwhile, it's going to be up fourth and nine for the Gators. They're going to try to punt this ball away. Just a little bit outside field goal range. No, now actually McPherson is now on the field, so they are going to kick the field goal. I believe Finn was originally out there. But McPherson just came on the, f on the field. He's four for four on 50-yard plus field goals. This is a 51-yard attempt. He had a 50-yarder earlier in this game. Was able to make that one. So from 51 yards out, McPherson looking to extend the Gators' lead. With 11.54 left to go in the third quarter. This kick is up, and it is good. An excellent kick from Evan McPherson. And the Gators now extend their lead. To 20 points. Gators lead at 41 21. We'll be back after this. You're listening to the University of Florida Student Broadcast Network. Welcome back to the University of Florida Student Broadcast Network here in Jacksonville, Florida, at the world's largest outdoor cocktail party under the lights now. A beautiful scene here in Jacksonville, despite not having a full crowd because of 2020 and the pandemic. Still an electric crowd here for this one as the Gators lead at 41-21 with 11.48 left to go in the third quarter. My name's Jake Ricker, and wow, what a game have we had so far. It's been excellent on all sides of the ball. It's been such a thrilling game. We've had pick sixes, long touchdown completions. We've had injuries in this game left and right. It has been quite the game. Long field goals as well as McPherson... Kicks this one off to Georgia. This one not returnable, though. It's actually be a flag on the play as that one was kicked out of bounds. 
So Georgia will get a tad better field position here. But the Georgia Bulldogs have had some couple of key missed opportunities. There was a pass that was going for Matt Landers where Sam Seston Bennett would just missed him. Fitzpatrick, who only had was one target in this game, dropped a pass where he could have had a huge game, possibly even a touchdown as well. So you take a look at Georgia points allowed. At Alabama, they allowed 41. The four other games combined, they only up 40. And versus Florida now, another 41 points. So Georgia's defense struggling against top 10 teams. Here's Bennett, he takes a snap, hands it off to number one. He's brought down for a short game, about three. That was... That was White on the carry, actually, excuse me. It was Zamir White finally getting the ball after the, only running one other time other than that 75-yard touchdown run. It's going to bring up second and six on Georgia's own 35 for the Bulldogs. 11.20 left to go in the third quarter. Bennett in the shotgun with White to his right. Takes a snap. Bennett looking left. He's going to throw that way. That ball is caught. And he's finally pushed out of bounds. That was Burton on the catch. And a first down pickup for the Georgia Bulldogs. Taking a look at some of the news and notes around the league. One of the biggest notes, we have the Clemson Tigers taking on the Fighting Irish in Notre Dame. But Trevor Lawrence is out tonight due to COVID-19. So we'll have to see how Clemson is able to respond there and see if they can still Knock down the Notre Dame. So it's going to be Burton alone in the shotgun. Drops back. Now stepping up. He's going to throw it downfield. That ball is incomplete. Intended for number 87, Trey McKetty, the second string tight end. Second and 10 for the Bulldogs. This offense, who coming into this game, was averaging about 29.2 points, which is on its own not enough to catch up with this Florida Gators offense on a regular week. They've been excellent today, even better than normal, but only 19 points over the last two weeks. They got 21 here, but need a lot more to try to catch this game. Here's a play action from Burton. Burton in trouble. He's got to throw it, and he throws it out of bounds. That one intended for Zamir White. Gators got some pressure to Burton. And he was forced to throw that one incomplete. So that's going to bring up third and 10 for the Gators. It was number 56, Slayton. Junior on the pressure there. Or not Slayton Junior, excuse me. Meanwhile, it's third and 10 for the Bulldogs. Burton. In the shotgun, drops back. Burton looking to his left. Now I'm going to throw deep downfield, and it's intercepted. It's caught by number five, the cornerback, Kilar Elam. Burton tried to go downfield, and the Gators pick it off. A costly mistake from Seston Burton. That ball was intended for number 83. And it looked like he, he tripped on that play. It was Johnson, I believe, who was the intended receiver. And he fell down, and Elam was right behind him to intercept that ball. So the Gators will have excellent starting field position. They lead this one 48-21 with 10-21 left in the go third quarter. You've been listening to the University of Florida Student Broadcast Network. Welcome back to the University of Florida Student Broadcast Network. My name is Jake Ricker. Here as the Florida number eight Florida Gators lead the number five Georgia Bulldogs 41-21 with 10, 21 left to go in this third quarter. Destin Burton just threw an interception on third and 10 of that last drive. Burton with five interceptions already on this season coming into this game. That was third worst in the SEC, now with six interceptions. Here come the Gators, though, with Kyle Trask in the shotgun. He'll take the snap. Malik Davis was to his right. Trask, under pressure, rolls out to his right. He's tripped up, and he's brought down behind the line of scrimmage. A huge sack for the Bulldogs. And that was number 11 on the play. 
to make that sack, Jeremiah Johnson, and a huge play there for the Bulldogs. That's going to bring up second and 18 for the Gators on their own 27. Trask in the shotgun. Malik Davis to his right. Trask takes a snap, drops back, looking right, pass. It's caught by Davis. Davis makes a move, all some room to run. He's all the way down, just about a yard or two short of the first down. So an excellent play there for the Gators to gain all those yards back. Malik Davis just again standing with Trask, runs out, out to that right side on a sweep kind of route. And now the Gators are just one yard short, third and one. With 9.13 left to go in the third quarter. Trask takes a snap. He's going to hand it off to Damian Pierce, and he makes up a move with the side, and a nice run there. He's got the first down easily. Take a look at our quarterback comparison in this game. Kyle Trask, 24 for 31, 398 yards, and four for one in the touchdown interception ratio. Ratio. Meanwhile, Seston Bennett, five for 16, 78 yards. And he has an interception and a touchdown in this game. So second and six for the Florida Gators here on their own 49-yard line. Trask takes a snap. He's going to hand it off to Pierce. Pierce makes a couple of moves, but he's met by multiple Bulldogs at the line of scrimmage. So no gain on the play there. That's going to bring up third and six. With 8-19 left to go in the third quarter. Florida Gators lead this one 41-21 as they look to upset number five, Georgia. Trask takes his snap as he drops back under pressure, throws out to Tony. Tony makes a cut back, and he's wrapped up by a couple defenders still on his feet. Finally brought down for a gain of two, but it'll be well short of the first down yard marker. So the Georgia Bulldogs defense does make another stop. That's going to send out the punting unit here. So Kyle Trask and company not able to extend their 20-point lead right now, but the way, the way this Gators defense has been playing, which has been the best all season so far, minus the, the early parts of that game, we'll see if a 20-point lead can hold with 7.20 left to go in the third quarter. Jacob Finn back to punt this ball. There's a nice punt all the way back, and that one's actually going to roll into the end zone. So it's going to be a touchback for the Georgia Bulldogs. Now their offense, we have to come out on the field and get some, get some work. They're down by 20 in this one as the Gators lead at 41-21 with 7.06 left to go in the third quarter. We'll be back after this. You've been listening to the University of Florida Student Broadcast Network. Welcome back here on the University of Florida Student Broadcast Network. My name is Jake Ricker here in Jacksonville, Florida as the number eight Florida Gators are taking on the number five Georgia Bulldogs. Gators lead it 41-21 here in the third quarter with 7.06 left to go. Bulldogs have some work to go. Seston Bennett is not on the field. Dewan Mathis back in the game here. Not sure if it's an injury related to Seston Bennett or if they're just taking him out so far. Nonetheless, here's Mathis on a handoff to White, and White gains about four on the play before he's brought down by the Gators' defense. Number 55, Campbell, on the stop there. So second and five here for the Bulldogs. Mathis in the shotgun with Samir White to his left-hand side. 6.35 left to go in the third quarter. Here's the snap. It's play action. Math is going to run with it. He's got some room. He makes a move. Still going all the way downfield. And he makes a huge pickup. He gets the first down and much more. As Mathis went for a beautiful run there. Excellent job on the play action. Made a great move to break one of the Florida's defenders and pick up a nice chunk of yards. So 6.10 left to go. Here in the third quarter, 
Georgia trails by 20 by a score of 41 to 21. First and 10 for the Bulldogs. Mathis in the shotgun with White to his right. And there's a snap flag on the play. It's going to be offsides. Free play here. Mathis going deep downfield. And it is tipped and incomplete. Multiple receivers in the area, but definitely going to be an offsides there on the Gators. I believe it was Cox Jr. who jumped. It was, and he was definitely offsides. But a smart play there by Mathis to know that was a... Offsides and throw that ball deep downfield. We've seen quarterbacks in the NFL like Aaron Rodgers do that. We do have an injury on the field. It's a bulldog. It's number seven, Jeremiah Button, who was in the area of that pass. Looks like his leg is a little bit shaken up here. His trainers are out to attend to him. That's not good news for the Bulldogs. They're already down a couple of receivers. George Pickens, who led the team with two touchdowns coming into this game, did not play today. And then Marcus Rosemary, or excuse me, yeah, Marcus Rosemary Jack Saint was hurt on the second touchdown of this game and went off on a stretcher with a broken ankle. Uh, Burton is able to walk off on his own power here. So good news for the Bulldogs, but will come out for this play. So it's going to be first and five here for the Bulldogs. On their own 47-yard line as they look and they need to try to get some points on the board to start chipping away at this 20-point lead. Number eight, Florida Gators lead this one 41 to 21 against the number five Georgia Bulldogs. So we're gonna take a quick break and we'll be right back after this. You've been listening to the University of Florida Student Broadcast Network. Welcome back here on University of Florida Student Broadcast Network. My name is Jake Ricker. The Gators lead this one 41 to 21 with 706 left to go. In the third quarter, I want to talk about real quick in this game and what this means for both teams as the Florida Gators who lost a upset to Texas A&M in just their third week, who were ranked number three at the time, now have dropped to number 10, and then we're back up to number eight after their win last week against Missouri. If they can win this game, that's a huge win to prove that that game against Texas a was maybe just a fluke, and they could potentially win out, maybe win the SEC championship and still make the college football playoffs. Here's Georgia handoff to Cook as he gains about one, maybe one on the play as the Gators immediately bring him down. So it's going to bring up second and four for the Bulldogs. Meanwhile, for the Bulldogs, if they lose this game, both... Their only loss so far this season has come to the number two ranked Alabama Crimson Tide. And then if this loss comes to the Florida Gators ranked at number eight right now, it might show, you know, they might not be able to perform against top ten teams, which really hurt their chances at making the SEC championship or even the college football playoffs as the Gators are currently one win behind the Bulldogs. Here's the snap. It's going to be a pass deep downfield, but it's way over the receiver's head, and it's incomplete. So bring up third and four. That was intended for number 16, Demetrius Robertson. So Mathis not able to hit his man there. But a big game for, for both these teams, obviously, with the, the history between the two. And these are the, the two best teams in that Eastern Conference of the SEC. So one of these teams, will, this, this game might decide who makes the SEC championship, considering... Uh, depending on how the rest of the season goes, that's if both of them uh, win out. But a lot can happen in this season. It is 2020. It's been the year of craziness. And looks like we got a timeout here by the Bulldogs. Mathis looks a little frustrated. Kirby Smart trying to give him some encouragement as his team is down by 20. We're going to take a quick break here. And the University of Florida Student Broadcast Network will be back after this. The 501 left to go in the third quarter. Welcome back here inside TIA A Bank Stadium in Jacksonville, Florida. As the number eight Florida Gators are taking on the number five Georgia Bulldogs. Gators lead it 41 21 with five minutes left to go in this third quarter. 
Dwayne Mathis out there on the field in place of Bennett. Here's Mathis, takes a snap, he's pressured, got to run away. He's going to start to run for that first down. And let's see where they spot this ball. Looked like he might have been just short. Depending on the spot, it might bring up fourth down, and they might have picked up the first. Mathis, he's been excellent on the two times he has run the ball. He's definitely got some speed. And they're going to give him the first down here, so it's going to bring up first and ten. And it looks like they might be bringing out the chains. I'm not sure what the call is here. Kirby Smart talking to the referees from the sidelines. Uh, that was Cox Jr. on the pressure there against Mathis. And let's take a look here. Uh, they're showing us the replay right now. And, oh, yeah, it looks like he was definitely well short. About a yard short of that first down. I say well short, but in retrospect, he's pretty close. But definitely looks like he is short. Tried to reach out, but I don't think it ever crossed that first down yard. So the play is under review right now. Interesting tidbit here with still four minutes and 46 seconds left to go in this third quarter. And we're about to get the call here. And it is going to be fourth down, so they do not get the first down there. And the Kirby Smart faced with the decision on whether to go for it here. I believe he will. It's going to be fourth and inches. But Tim Tebow has the school record for passing yards in a single game. 482 yards in the 2010 Sugar Bowl. Kyle Trask with 401 yards so far in this game. Just 81 yards away from breaking the school record. We will have to see if Trask can break it. But meanwhile, it's going to be Mathis and the Georgia Bulldogs coming out, trying to cut down in this lead on fourth and inches. Mathis in the shotgun with White to his right. Two receivers out to Mathis' left. Here's the snap. They're going to hand it off to White. No, it's kept by Mathis, and he pulls over a Gators defender for the first down. Excellent play by Kirby Smart and the Georgia Bulldogs offense, and they've got the first. Fake the handoff to White, who has been excellent in this game. He had that 75-yard touchdown run. Hasn't gotten the ball too much after that. But Mathis Campbell, we've seen him been able to turn on the Jets in this game, and he just pulled over one of the Gators' defenders. So it's going to be first and 10 for the Bulldogs on UF's 46. Mathis in the shotgun with Cook to his right. Takes a snap, Mathis drops back, looking right. He's under pressure, got to roll away. He gets away now and is hit hard by a Gators defender. It was number 41 on the tackle. Mathis got about one yard on the play before he was rocked by James Houston. The red shirt junior, six foot one, 240 pounds. And he just squared him up and rocked him. Mathis, though, has been excellent on his feet, was nearly tackled in the backfield, but was able to still break away. There's a flag on the play here. And it's going to be against Florida here. So with 325 left on the third quarter, Dan Mullen now telling his coaches to get back. I wonder if that if the sidelines received a penalty here. He's I'll let you know as soon as I find out. But meanwhile, it's going to be Mathis in the shotgun, second and eight. I think he might have got a warning there. Cook to his right. Mathis takes a snap. He's going to keep it. No, it's Cook on the outside, and he gets the first down and more. Mathis Gave the ball to Cook, made it look like he had it, and kind of ran in front of Cook. Nonetheless, it's a first down for the for the Georgia Bulldogs. With 2.54 left to go in this third quarter. Mathis takes a snap, drops back. He's looking, and his play is whistled dead. There's a flag on the play. And it's going to be a false start on the offense. So that'll back Georgia up with three or 246 left to go 
in the first quarter. First and 15 now for the Bulldogs. With 2.36 left to go in the third quarter. Mathis in the shotgun. A little bit of motion before the snap. Mathis takes a snap. He's going to hand this one off to Milton. Milton with some room to run, breaking into the secondary, and he's finally brought down just shy of the 20 yard line. But now Milton, a little slow to get up there, and he's going to limp off the field and falls down, cannot make it off the field. So another injury for Georgia, but an excellent run by Milton there. Just went right up the middle, broke into the secondary, and then was brought down at the 20-yard line. But he has now also gone down with an injury, so that's going to make this Georgia team even thinner. as multiple trainers are out to attend to him here. And it looks like one of the trainers calling for some more help. That's not a good sign here for the Bulldogs. And they're down 20 here with 2.14 left to go in the third quarter. They got a lot of work to do if they want to come back in this game. But good news for them is that there's still a lot of time left. As we look at the stadium here at TIAA Bank Field in Jacksonville, Florida. Lots of fans still in attendance despite the lessened capacity. One of the greatest traditions for this Florida Georgia team. Milton now walking off with the help of trainers. Looks like it was a another ankle injury. It was number eight for Florida on the tackle. And he's kind of wrapped up around his leg and well, I would assume either twisted it or maybe even a fracture, worst case scenario there. That was Chris Bogle on the tackle for the Gators. So first and 10 for Georgia. Mathis back out there with 2.14 left to go in the third quarter. Georgia just outside of the red zone. It's been a while for them. They need these points. Here's the handoff to Cook. Cook up the middle and gets two, maybe three yards on the play, or one or two yards, excuse me. As we now approach under two minutes in this third quarter, and there you see Seston Burton out on the sidelines. And, you know, he came out of this game for a little while after an injury and then was taken out and has not come back in. So you wonder if Kirby Smart made a decision to try and shake things up in putting Mathis in. Mathis is looking good so far here on second and eight. Mathis with Cook to his right in the shotgun. And the ball is loose on a bad snap. Mathis is able to jump on it, though. But that's the second bad snap for the Bulldogs. And that's going to back him up big time and make it a long third down. Looks like Mathis just could not hold on to that one. And an unfortunate situation. So third and 14 for the Bulldogs. They are in field goal range, though, to at least get some points on the board. Gators looking to hold him to a field goal. Mathis in the shotgun, Cook to his right, two receivers out to his left. Mathis takes the snap, drops back, looking to his left, steps up. He's going to throw it, is caught for the touchdown. Curious Jackson gets the grab. And a huge touchdown for Georgia. They needed that. An excellent job by Mathis to make that throw. He dropped back, stepped up, made a beautiful throw. It looks like that was number six on for the Florida Gators in coverage who slipped and was not able to recover. That's Sean Davis in coverage. Extra point is up, and it is good to the Gators. 
See their lead decline a little bit as the Gators now just lead it 41-28 with 41 seconds left in the third quarter. It's Jackson's second receiving touchdown this season, which ties George Pickens on the team who led the team coming in to the game today. Good drive by the Georgia Bulldogs who needed that there. We're down by 20. And now have cut into that lead a little bit. So Dwayne Mathis in his first career game has two for three on 30 yards and a touchdown so far today. He's been excellent since coming into the game for Burton. But now Kyle Trask, his offense will get to come out on the field and try to bring that lead right back up to 20 as they now only lead it by 13 points. Still at least a two score game though for the Gators offense. With just 41 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Remember this is a huge game for both these teams as both of them are in the SEC East Winner of this game usually is the one that makes it to the SEC Championship pending any other upsets or potential losses down the road. But more often than not, this head-to-head -head game plays a big factor in that. And for the Gators, they need the win after losing to Texas A&M. They're going to need to win out if they want a shot at making the college football playoffs. This ball is kicked off and out of the end zone. So Kyle Trask and company will take over at their own 25 and look to try and get their lead back up to 20. And again, meanwhile, for the Georgia Bulldogs, they've already had one loss to Alabama. But another loss to another top 10 team will likely hurt their chances at making a championship even more, considering it'd be harder to make them the SEC championship There, Trask here in the shotgun, takes a snap, throws this one out short, and the ball is caught, and they've got the first down. That's number six, Naquan right on the catch. So the Gators offense picks up right where it left off and continues to pick up those first downs. We've seen this same play from the Gators multiple times where they're running back on that right-hand side, pops out to the right side, and then just goes up the sidelines and gets... A nice chunk of yards. We have another Georgia Bulldog down on the field. This time it's number 20. And this Georgia Bulldogs team just continues to get thinner and thinner. Kyle Trask up to 412 yards in this game. as Georgia Bulldogs defender is able to get up on his own feet and walk off the field. So good news for them. Kyle Trask now has the most passing yards for the Georgia Bulldogs in school history with 411. Remember, we mentioned earlier, Tim Tebow has the record for most passing yards in a single game at 482. Trask approaching that one. So as Travis continue to break SEC records, he's breaking school history records as well. Here with 32 seconds left to go in the third quarter. First and 10 for the Gators here. As they come back out in the field looking to try to extend their lead even more. They were leading by 20 until Georgia was able to drive down the field with rookie quarterback Duan Mathis and get a touchdown. Gators lead this one 41 to 28 right now, and the third quarter is going to roll to an end here. So they're going to let this one roll out and move to the fourth quarter. And as the Gators lead it, 31 28. We'll be back after this. You've been listening to the University of Florida Student Broadcast Network. Welcome back to the University of Florida Student Broadcast Network on this beautiful Saturday night. Under the stars, the Florida Gators are taking on the Georgia Bulldogs. 
And the Gators lead this one 41-28. Kyle Trask back out on the field in the shotgun here, looking to try and extend this lead. Trash takes a snap, drops back. He'll throw over the middle. That ball is caught by Naquan Wright, and Wright's past the first down yard. Markers for a pickup of about 10 on the play. Excellent job by Kyle Trask. And Naquan Wright able to pick up a nice chunk of yard. Gators offense continues to roll. And now Emory Jones checks into the game for another play. He was in two other plays earlier so far. Jones in the shotgun. Two receivers out to his right, one to his left. It's going to be a handoff to Naquan Wright, and he goes down with about a gain of three or four. So it's going to bring up second down for the Gators. Kyle Trask still out of the game. Emory Jones will remain in. Second and six here for the Gators. Jones in the shotgun, takes a snap. He's going to run with it. Jones out to the left side. He's got some room to run. He's past the first down yard marker and gains a little more there and picks up another first down for the Gators. 14.40 left to go in the fourth quarter. Excellent run by Emory Jones there. We've seen Dan Mullen utilize him so much with taking that direct snap and just running up field. 13-23 left to go in the fourth quarter. Kyle Trask back in the game. Trask takes a snap. Play action pass. Now throws out and the ball is caught by the tight end. Number 88. That's Gamble who already has a touchdown in this game. I think that pass was actually going to Naquan right, but Gamble came across and grabbed it anyway. <laughs> but nonetheless, it's a first down for the Florida Gators once again. Florida has been driving very nicely so far in this drive. Kyle Trask, six in the nation. When it comes to passing yards per game, 335 on this season. Trask now here in the shotgun. Naquan right to his right. Grimes moves in motion to the left-hand side. Here's the snap. Handed off to right, right up the side. On the left-hand side brought down for a gain of about three. Kyle Trask, 28 for 35 today, 435 yards, four touchdowns, an interception. That 435 yards is a career record for Kyle Trask. Second and six, he's alone in the backfield. Naquan right now comes over to his right-hand side. Trask takes a snap. He's going to hand it off to Wright, and Wright is immediately met by multiple Georgia Bulldogs, and he's brought down behind the line of scrimmage. For a loss there, that's going to bring up third and long here for the Gators. Third and eight to be exact. 11-28 left to go in the fourth quarter. The Gators lead this one 41 to 28. Uh, third down conversions of more than eight yards. Gators are 0 for 3 as they look to try and pick up one here. Trask in the shotgun. Right to his right. Trash drops back, throwing out to his left, and it is high and incomplete. That one intended for Justin Shorter there. Trax knows he missed him. So that'll bring out the field goal unit for the Florida Gators here. So they will get some points back on the board. And I think that pass would have been well uh, would have been short of the first down, but would have been a lot closer for the first, that's for sure. Kyle Trask frustrated. He missed that pass on that one. So Evan McPherson, who's already had two field goals today, this is the shortest one of the day for him so far, 45 yards. With 11.02 left to go here in the fourth quarter. McPherson has been excellent for the Gators. Here's the kick. It is up, and it is curving. It is no good. So McPherson misses this one wide right. And the Georgia Bulldogs escape away. By holding the Gators here, it's 
And the Georgia offense will get to come back out on the field when we come back after this to try and cut more to that lead. You're listening to the University of Florida Student Broadcast Network. Welcome back here in the University of Florida Student Broadcast Network here in Jacksonville, Florida. As the number eight Florida Gators are taking on the number five Georgia Bulldogs and the Gators lead it 41-28. But after a missed field goal by Evan McPherson, it was now two for three on the day. Georgia Bulldogs offense will be able to come back out on the field and try to cut into this lead a little bit more. Only down by 13 points right now, so a two point or two possession game so far. And it's been the Dewan Mathis show, and he is back in for this drive once again after replacing. Seston Bennett, here's Mathis door to the right, and that ball is just over the top and incomplete. So that'll bring up second and 10 for Mathis. Mathis telling his receivers that was on him once again. That ball was intended for number 87. That was um, Trey McKitty, their backup tight end. Just missed him on that outside route on the right-hand side. Second and 10 now here for the Bulldogs with 10.51 left to go in the fourth quarter. Georgia on their own 26-yard line. Down by a score of 41 to 28. Mathis takes and hands it off. And that time it's White who only gains about two on the play. So that'll bring up third down for the Bulldogs. Third and nine. And Mathis is going to need a big completion here to keep this drive alive. Trying to cut in this lead after a big missed field goal from the Gators. Georgia's two for nine on third down conversions tonight, which has been a part of this storyline tonight. Been a big problem for the Georgia Bulldogs. Gator defense has done very well so far tonight for the most part after they've been criticized a lot this year. Here's Mathis alone in the backfield, drops back on the snap. Now steps up, he slips and falls, and he goes down behind the line of scrimmage. So the Gators defense makes another big stand. And that's going to make a fourth and 13. Mathis tried to step up on the play and slipped. Probably due to the rain that we've had all day today. Just, he tried to plant his foot, it looked like, above him and fell right down. So with that bringing up fourth and 13, the Bulldogs will punt this one. Canarius Tony back there to receive it. Here's a punt from... Kamara, and that one rolls out of bounds at about the 45-yard line. So the Florida Gators will get to come back out to work on offense here as they look to try and extend their lead once again. 41-28, the Gators lead it with 9.28 left to go in the fourth quarter. We'll be back after this. You're listening to the University of Florida Student Broadcast Network. Welcome back here on the University of Florida Student Broadcast Network. My name is Jake Ricker. Here on this Saturday night, the historic rivalry of the Florida Gators versus the Georgia Bulldogs continues. Gators lead this one 41 to 28. With 9.28 left to go in the fourth quarter, Kyle Trask and company getting ready to come back out onto the field. Trying to extend their lead. Here late in the fourth quarter. It's been an unbelievable game here in Jacksonville. Lots of back and forth. Pick sixes, injuries, deep passes. We've had it all here in tonight's game. Kyle Trask in the shotgun. Three receivers out to his left. Here's a handoff to Damian Pierce. Pierce breaks a couple of tackles still on his feet. And he's eventually brought down for a gain of two. To bring up second and eight for the Gators. I mean, Pierce, his jersey's just a tad bit dirty here after getting tackled into the ground so many times. He's been excellent today, though. Demion Pierce, 47 yards on the ground and a touchdown. So with nine minutes left to go in the fourth quarter, Trask here in the shotgun. It's going to be Damian Pierce to his left. Three receivers bunched up to the right. 
Second eight for the Gators. Trash takes a snap. Now throwing, and it's incomplete. That one intended for Kadarius Tony. Looks like Tony might have taken the wrong route there, as Tony told Trask it was that was on his part. So third and eight for the Gators here. We mentioned earlier that the Gators are 0 for 3 on third down conversions when it or 0 for 4 now, excuse me, when it comes to third down conversions of eight yards or more. So they look to change that here. They started six for nine on third down conversions. They're 0 for 3 since. Trask alone in the backfield. Shorter in motion. Trash drops back. He's going to throw out that way, and that ball is dropped. Justin Shorter had it past the first down yard marker and was not able to hold on to that ball. Nearly had it. That was actually my mistake. That was Trayvon Grimes. Shorter went on that left side, but cut in more towards the middle of the field. So Trayvon Grimes drops one. And I'll bring up fourth and eight for the Gators. So they're going to punt this ball away. There's still eight minutes and 41 seconds left in this fourth quarter. Georgia could easily come back in this game. It is not over by any means. Jacob Finn punts this one off. And the Bulldogs just call for a fair catch. And they're going to start at the nine-yard line. So, Dewan Mathis coming back out onto the field. Try and lead his team down. And cut into this lead, just 8.34 left to go here in the fourth quarter. And this one, we'll be right back after this short break. You've been listening to the University of Florida Student Broadcast Network. Welcome back here on the University of Florida Student Broadcast Network. The Florida Gators lead the Georgia Bulldogs by 17 points by a score of 41 to 28. And the Georgia Bulldogs offense is going to start at their own nine. Dewan Mathis, who came in for Seston Bennett earlier in this game, looking to try and lead his team down the field and still give Georgia a chance at squeaking out a win. 8.34 left to go in the fourth quarter. Mathis, play action pass. He's going to throw deep downfield, and that ball is behind. The intended receiver, Matt Landers. So while Mathis has shown some bright spots since he's taken over for quarterback, he's also had a couple issues and mainly missed a couple of good opportunities. Landers had his man beat. Could have been a huge pickup there. Nonetheless, it's second and 10. 8.34 left to go in this fourth quarter. Mathis two for five and 30 yards, a touchdown so far in this game. Mathis in the shotgun with White to his right side. Mathis takes a snap. It's going to be a handoff to White. White, he's got some room to run. Here goes White all the way down. Just shy of the 30 before he's brought down. Zamir White finally gets another big runoff. And Georgia hurries up the offense here. Here's Mathis, looking around, tries to throw this ball, and it's incomplete. Was not able to, he had some pressure there. Forced him to try to get that ball out quick. That ball intended for Darnell Washington. But the ball fell short, so that's going to bring up second and ten. With eight, ten, 8 minutes and 10 seconds left to go in this fourth quarter. Gators still lead it 41-28. Mathis in the shotgun with right to his left-hand side. Mathis takes a snap, looking right, holding. He's going to throw this ball deep downfield, and it is just incomplete. That one intended for Robertson. And once again, the Georgia Bulldogs have had Multiple opportunities, but have just missed it or have had drop balls. Mathis took a hit at the end of that play. Gators throwing pressure. And again, Robertson had his man beat and would have been off to the races for a touchdown if he makes that catch, but it's just beyond his fingertips there. So now it's third and 10 for the Bulldogs, still all the way back on their own 29-yard line. 
One for six on third down conversions that are eight yards and more. Just two for ten on third down conversions today. And we're going to get a timeout. Here by the Florida Gators. With 8.04 left to go in the fourth quarter, that's their second charge timeout. So we're going to take a quick break here on the University of Florida Student Broadcast Network. Gators lead it 41-28. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to the University of Florida Broadcast Student Network. We're back here in Jacksonville, Florida, where the Florida Gators are taking on the Georgia Bulldogs, number eight ranked Gators. Take it on the number five, Georgia Bulldogs. So a huge game here on the season for both of these teams. Both these teams still looking to try and make the SEC championship and potentially make a bid for the college football playoffs. But they're going to need a win here tonight and more than likely win out for the rest of the season. But both of each other are looking to be in their way here in this game. And the Gators lead it 41-28. We had lots of scoring in that early in that first half, and then ever since the second half, it's kind of slowed down a little bit. We had back and forth. Evan McPherson missed a field goal a little bit earlier in this game. And Georgia did have one touchdown, so the Gators did lead it by 20, but now only lead it by 17 with eight minutes and four seconds left in the fourth quarter. Georgia's missed about five huge passes that all five of them, maybe four, could have gone for touchdowns. So, while the Gators' defense has definitely looked a lot better than it has in past weeks, still some work to do for this Gators' defense. Third and 10 now. Georgia is 2 for 10 on the third down so far in this game. Mathis in the shotgun with Cook to his right, two receivers out to his left, and one receiver out to his right. Here's the snap. Mathis drops back, stepping up now, throwing downfield. It's topped incomplete. That one broken up by Marco Wilson. Mathis tried to throw that one into some tight coverage. And that'll bring up fourth and ten for the Bulldogs. And they'll be forced to punt this ball away. Excellent job by the Gators defense to force the th force fourth down. So Kamada is going to come out to punt this one. Averaging 43 yards on his punts. Had that one, though, that he shanked and did not help them. Darius Tony calls for a fair catch here on the 25-yard line. So Kyle Trask and company will come back out onto the field once again, hoping to this time successfully extend their 17-point lead. Coming up later tonight, Clemson Tigers taking on Notre Dame. Clemson ranked as the number one team in the nation. We want Notre Dame ranked at number four. But the big storyline here is that Trevor Lawrence is not going to play because of COVID-19. And Clemson on a 28-game ACC win streak. So a big game coming on tonight. We'll have to keep our eyes on that one and see how it goes. But right now it's the Florida Gators and the Georgia Bulldogs facing off in this top 10 matchup here in Jacksonville, Florida. Trask in the shotgun. He'll take the snap drop back. Trask looking right, steps up now, throws, that ball is caught by Malik Davis for the first down. Trask and his offense continuing to roll. Trask now all the way up to 435 yards in this game. He has been absolutely outstanding and just continuing to roll. That pass to Malik Davis that time. Actually, 453 yards, excuse me. Malik Davis, 14 rush yards, 100 receiving yards. A total of 114 yards in this game. First and 10, Trask alone in the backfield. Three receivers out to his left, one receiver to his right. 7-10 left to go in the fourth quarter. Trask takes a snap. Looking right now, looking left. Throws, and it's dropped. It was nearly intercepted by number 23. That was a pick six if he holds onto that ball. It's Webb Jr. that dropped it. Trask tried to hit a short slant route. He was hit at the end of that play there. 
That ball was intended for, I believe, his tight end, Kimor Gamble. But nearly a costly mistake. That's now the sixth play that Georgia could have had a touchdown on, and the ball was either overthrown from offense or, or dropped. Meanwhile, Kyle, Kyle Trask under center now. Malik Davis behind him in the backfield. Malik Davis will get the ball, and he's stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a gain of one on the play. And that's going to bring up about third and nine. So we'll see what Dan Mullen tries to draw up. Remember, this game is not over with six minutes and 45 seconds left. Still plenty of time for Georgia to come back. They're down by two scores right now. Gators would like to extend that lead and try to put this game out of reach. Third and nine. For the Gators, Trask alone in the backfield. Three receivers out to his left and two receivers out to his right. Kyle Trask takes a snap, drops back with time. Trask now rolling out to his left. He'll throw. It's caught by Tony. He's got the first and more. Tony still on his feet, and he falls down just past the 40-yard line. And the Gators pick up a huge first down with six minutes and five seconds left to go in the fourth quarter. Kyle Trask did an excellent job taking his time Trying to find his man. He got Canarius Tony, who just puts on the Jets once again and is so good on his feet. And the Gators now driving a little bit here. Canarius Tony, eight receptions, 52 yards on the day. Trask in the shotgun. Davis to his left. Through receivers bunched up to his right. Grimes in motion. Trask takes a snap. He's going to hand it off. Here's Davis to the left side. Now cuts back up. And he's brought down for maybe a gain of one on the play. So that'll bring up second and nine here for the Gators. With 5.18 left to go in the fourth quarter. Trask now 474 yards in this game as Georgia takes a timeout. That means Kyle Trask is under 10 yards away from breaking the Florida Gators' single season passing record, or excuse me, single most passing yards in a single game, which is currently held by Florida Gators legend Tim Tebow. So Trask, who has continued to make SEC history, now looking to make France, or school history as well. To take a look at Georgia Bulldogs' schedule coming up here. Currently taking on number eight, Florida. They're going to head to Missouri next week and then take on Mississippi State. We remember the ones who've had a couple of big wins this year, then headed to South Carolina and then finished the season against Vanderbilt. Meanwhile, though, it's Kyle Trask on second and nine with 5.18 left to go in the fourth quarter. Gators lead it 41-28. Trask takes a snap, looks left. He'll throw, and that one is incomplete. That one right in between two Georgia defenders. Lucky that one wasn't picked off. 39 now for the Gators. Tried to get that one to number 15, Jacob Copeland. And he had him open, but the, the two Georgia defenders closed in quick, and the pass was low, so it ended up being an incompletion, probably for the better. So 39, Gators are 7 for 14 on third down conversions. They have only made one third down conversion, though, on eight yards or more. Trash in the shotgun with Davis to his right. One receiver out to his left, two receivers out to his right. Trash takes a snap. He's going to hand it off to Davis. Davis up the middle, and he'll gain about three, maybe four yards on the play, which will be short of that first down. So... That'll more than likely send out the punting unit here on fourth and four. And Kirby Smart takes another timeout. Like Dan Mullen was just trying to kill some clock there with five minutes and nine seconds left in this fourth quarter. Georgia only down by 17. Now we look at the Florida Gators football schedule. Remember we said both these teams, a huge game. They both still have an opportunity to make the SEC championship and possibly the college football playoffs. Gators will head to Arkansas next week. And then had Vanderbilt, then Kentucky, then head to Tennessee, 
and play LSU, which was rescheduled on December 12th. Rescheduled from October 17th after the Gators had to miss two weeks due to COVID. So it's going to be McPherson that comes out. So the Gators will try to kick the field goal. Remember, McPherson has made a 51-50 and 50 yarder, missed the 40-yarder earlier in this game. But he will get another shot here to try to extend the Gators' lead. Back to this time to 16. Gators did lead by 20 until that Georgia touchdown. Which has been the only touchdown in this second half. No way, Kyle Trask is now on the field. Their days are going to go for it here on fourth down. Trask in the shotgun. He's going to take the snap. Trask drops back. Under pressure. Throws, and it's tipped incomplete. So McPherson walked out onto the field, and then Dan Mullen left Kyle Trask out there to try and go for it on fourth down. And Georgia brought the pressure, and Trask had to get that ball off quick, and it was incomplete. So... Uh, interesting decision there by Mullen. Mullen obviously trusting his defense. There are up two scores in this one, so with 5.06 left, Mathis heads back out on the field to once again try and lead his team to the end zone and get some more points on the board. Georgia will start on their own 28-yard line here. Mathis in the shotgun. With Cook to his right. Mathis hands it off to Cook on a delayed handoff. Matt and Cook gains about six yards on the play. A nice run there by James Cook. Second and four now for the Georgia Bulldogs. Mathis takes a snap, drops back. Rolls out to his right. He's going to try to run here, and he's forced out of bounds way behind the line of scrimmage. It's number 55 for the Florida Gators with the pressure there to force Mathis out of bounds way behind the line of scrimmage. That's Kyrie Campbell, who has been excellent so far for the Gators. Not a normal starter for them. Was that to come into this game? So third and eight for the Bulldogs. With four minutes and 13 seconds left to go in this fourth quarter. Mathis in the shotgun with Cook to his right. Receiver out to his right and two receivers out to his left. Mathis takes a snap, drops back, throwing to his right side, and that ball is incomplete, out of bounds. Intended for number five, Matt Landers. And that's going to bring up fourth and eight for the Bulldogs. So after two big stops on the Gators' last drive and a fourth down stop as well, Georgia can't convert. And with 4-0-1 left to go in this game, I think Kirby Smart's going to leave his offense out there to try and go for this. And remember that Bulldogs are still on their, their own 30 right now. Mathis takes a snap, drops back, pressured, under... Throws the ball, and it is intercepted. It's Sean Davis. Sean Davis now moving off to the 40. He's got room to run to the 30, the 20. He's finally brought down at the 15-yard line. Sean Davis with a huge interception. And with 347 left to go, the Gators are that much closer to winning this game. Excellent job by the Florida Gators defensive line to absolutely penetrate. They brought the house and forced Mathis to move up to the right side and make a quick, in uh, a bad decision. And he threw that one and that fell right into the hands of Sean Davis. And then he went all the way down to the 15 yard line. On the interception return. So, Georgia making this game a lot more difficult on themselves. Kirby Smart trying to give some words of encouragement to his young quarterback and DeWan Mathis. And now the Florida Gators with an opportunity to try and put this game away as the offense comes back out 
onto the field. Remember, Kyle Trask just a couple yards away from breaking the most passing yards in a single game. You can see Mathis right now on the sidelines, very frustrated with himself. Georgia takes a timeout here. Florida Gator fans are loving it. As they're excited, they look to get their first win in three years against Georgia. Take a look at the quarterbacks today. Kyle Trask, 30 for 43, 474 yards, four touchdowns, interception. Meanwhile, Seston Bennett, five for 16 on 78 yards, a touchdown interception. And Dwayne Mathis, also with a touchdown interception. They just cut away the one on the yards there. I apologize about that. It was, uh, let's see, Dwayne Mathis says two for 10, 30 yards. Kyle Trask trying to break Tim Tebow's single game, most passing yards record here in school history. But he's also looking to try to secure the win for the Florida Gators, which would be a huge win, not only because they haven't beaten Georgia in three years in this matchup, but it's an upset and puts them that much closer to being back in the top four and potentially making the SEC championship in the college football playoffs. Here's the snap, handoff to Tony. Tony bouncing out to the left side. He gets maybe one yard on the play, and he's brought down. Three minutes and 35 seconds left to go in this fourth quarter. It's going to be second and nine for the Gators. Georgia has used all three of their timeouts. Florida still with one remaining. You wonder if they're going to want to give Trask an opportunity to pass this ball to try and break that record. I'm sure they're thinking more about the win, though, and trying to get the back to the college football playoffs. Still a long way to go for that, though, but this win would be a huge step in the right direction after that loss to Texas A&M. Trask under Stender. Pierce in the backfield. Handoff to Pierce. Pierce bounced out to the right side, makes a cutback, and he gains about three on the play. So that's going to bring up third down for the Gators, third and six with 2.46 left to go. Kyle Trask getting the play from his sidelines. Here on this beautiful Saturday night, under the lights, skaters looking to try and pull out the win, or secure the win, I should say, as they are on Georgia's 12-yard line. 2.17 left to go in the fourth quarter. Gators lead it 41-28. Trask in the shotgun with Pierce to his right. Here's the snap. They're going to hand it off to Pierce. Pierce bounces around on the outside, and he's brought down for a gain of one. Well, short of the first down, so that'll bring up fourth down. And as we look at the SEC standings right now, both Florida and Georgia up there. This win would give Florida the lead in the SEC East. And assuming both teams are able to win out without any upsets and losing big games, that would mean Florida would head to the SEC Championship, potentially giving them a chance at making it back into the top four for the college football playoffs. So 125 left to go in the fourth quarter. Time ticking down. Florida killing as much clock as they can. And they're going to take the delay a game penalty here, I believe, as Trask... Heads off the field, McPherson to come out and try and kick the field goal here and give the Gators a 16-point lead. There's the flag for delay of game. So 1-12 left to go, McPherson. He's 2 for 3 so far on the day, had that one missed field goal earlier. As they're now looking at Wide receiver for the Georgia Bulldogs, Rosemary Jack Saint, who went out on the stretcher earlier in this game, is on the sidelines. He's heading off now, though. This game comes closer to an end. Fortunate for him to have such a, a tough injury at the beginning of this game. He had a huge touchdown for the Bulldogs, go up 14 0. McPherson lines up to try and kick this one. With a minute 23 left in the fourth quarter, this would put the Gators up by 16. Kick is up, and it is good. McPherson nails this one, 
And the Gators lead it 44 to 28, which makes it a three possession game with just a minute 19 and Georgia's got no timeouts remaining. It almost all but wraps this one up. A huge day for the Gators and you gotta think back to that play from Kyle Trask who threw it to Kyle Pitts who had a defender all over him. The defender actually got called for pass interference and Kyle Pitts still caught the touchdown and Pitts did unfortunately come out of this game after he was hit in the head from a targeting hit and he has not returned. So you hope for the Gators if they're able to finish off this win that Kyle Pitts is okay is able to come back next week as he's been a huge part of this offense. Kyle Trask getting some love from the sidelines. He has been absolutely excellent in this game. 30 for 43, 474 yards, four touchdowns, and an interception. A couple yards shy of the single game passing record in school history. So Florida will kick this one off to Georgia with a minute 19 left to go. Here in the world's largest outdoor cocktail party. Caters will kick this one off and that ball is gonna be returnable and Georgia will try to return this one. And as they continue to get some more yardage, it's number 10 for the Bulldogs. Curious Jackson on the return. And a decent return for them on this game. So. Mathis will come back out onto the field. Remember, Mathis came in for Seston Bennett earlier in this game after Bennett had to come out for a play. He was hurt. And Bennett came back in and then was pulled from the game. We don't really know if it was due to injury or if Kirby Smart just decided to make a move and pull him. But nonetheless, minute 12 left to go. Mathis in the shotgun out for the Bulldogs looking to try and at least make this game a little closer. He's got Cook to his right. Mathis takes a snap. He's going to drop back. Holds onto that ball. Now under pressure. Throws. Tipped. And it's nearly. No, it's caught now. Oh, my goodness. What a play there. That pass was intended for Cook. And it was tipped off of Cook's hands. And then it was Elam. Keeler Elam for the Gators. Who, since the ball ch changed direction, he couldn't hold on. It was tipped off his hands, and then Cook ended up catching the ball. <laughs> what a play there. So, minute six left to go in the fourth quarter. It's second and six. Mathis takes a snap, drops back. Now steps up, throws. It's caught by Cook, and he's immediately brought down by the Gators' defense. It's number 16 on the tackle. Excellent job to jump up on that play. Going to a short game. Get Georgia going to pretty up offense. Mathis takes a snap again. In trouble, he's under pressure and he's brought down behind the line of scrimmage for a sack. It's number 33 this time for the Gators. And that'll bring up fourth down. And the Gators sideline, the fans that are here at the game are on their feet with just 20 seconds left to go in the fourth quarter. Fourth and 11. Mathis in the shotgun, Cook to his right. Mathis takes a snap, probably the last play of the game for the Bulldogs, they don't pick up the first down. Mathis rolling to the right, he's gonna throw, it's intercepted, and this game is over. The Florida Gators will have to run one more play, but they're gonna beat the Georgia Bulldogs for the first time in three years. It upset number five. Seven seconds left on the clock. Kyle Trask comes back out to make one more play. There was a little bit of a scrum at the end of that play, it seemed like. Kyle Trask loving the interception on the sideline. He is excited. And Todd Grantham gets the Gatorade bath. His defense did do an excellent job. So there's the kneel, and Kyle Trask ends it. The Gators have defeated the number five Georgia Bulldogs by a score of 44 to 28. Gators advance four 
to four and one, and the Georgia Bulldogs fall to four and two. And that puts the Gators in first place in the SEC. And they now have a path to the SEC championship and maybe even the college football playoffs. Meanwhile, the Georgia Bulldogs' path becomes a lot tougher, but still a lot of work to do for the Gators. But a huge win, not only with the upset, but winning for the first time in three years against the Bulldogs. The first win in Jacksonville for Dan Mullen against Kirby Smart. As players shake hands there, let's give away a player of the game. In this one, it's none other than Kyle Trask, who was 30 for 43 with 474 yards, just a couple yards shy of that passing record. Four touchdowns, one interception. But all around, great job by this Florida Gators offense. Kyle Trask did an excellent job of spreading the ball around. And the other thing here for the Florida Gators, the only thing you can hope for is that Kyle Pitts, who took went out after that targeting hit, is okay. Is able to come back for this team as they continue to try to go on a run. And meanwhile, for, for the Georgia Bulldogs, you face a lot of injuries. You had a couple injuries coming into this game. But you got to hope as well that the injuries they sustained in this game, that a lot of these players are able to come back maybe soon enough. And they have a chance to try and hold on and keep it close here in the SEC in case Florida ends up losing one. And the last thing I'll say about the Gators, the Gators defense, which had struggled coming into this game, holds Georgia to 28 points, which while isn't perfect, they had given up that 75-yard touchdown at the beginning of the game, but ever since then, after the two touchdowns early in the game for Georgia, Florida was locked down and was excellent on defense. The only other points coming in that first half was from the pick six from Kyle Trask. And then they did up the one touchdown in the third quarter. But other than that, Gators defense looked much better and they're going to need to be even better than tonight if they want a shot at making the college football playoffs. So that's gonna do it here from the University of Florida Student Broadcast Network in Jacksonville, Florida. The Florida Gators upset number five, Georgia Bulldogs by a final score of 44 to 28. UF is loving it. Gator fans are excited. Have a good night. And we'll see you all next week as the Florida Gators will look to extend their winning streak. Good night, everybody.